Hello, everyone, and welcome inside the George Finney Stadium at Trestle Field on the campus of Baldwin Wallace University. It's regular season opener time for the Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets as they celebrate the regular season and home opener today in the Lee Trestle Classic against the Mount St. Joseph Lions, the Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets. And Mount St. Joseph Lions are renewing their non-conference rivalry. This is the second time that they've met in school history. The Mount St. Joseph Lions won the first ever meeting last season by a score of 31 to 28 down in Cincinnati. I'm Matt Florjancic and I'll be on the call today with Logan Rogers. And Logan, welcome to the booth and welcome to Yellow Jacket Football. It's good to have you along. Oh, thank you very much. I'm super excited to be here and really excited to get the season going. Yeah, the Yellow Jackets are led by Coach Jim Hilbert. He is in his seventh season at BW and has a record of 36 and 16, and he is 30 and 15 in Ohio Athletic Conference play. Overall, he is 103 and 42 in 15 seasons as a collegiate head coach. He is six and two overall against Mount St. Joseph, and he is nine and five in season openers, including a four and two record at Baldwin Wallace. Mount St. Joseph is led by Tyler Hopperton, who is also in his seventh season as head coach and 12th season overall at Mount St. Joseph. He has a record of 42 and 15 and a conference mark in the Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference of 34 and nine. The BW Yellow Jackets finished the 2022 season with a seven and three overall record, good for third place in the Ohio Athletic Conference where they held a mark of seven and two. The Yellow Jackets averaged 27.6 points per game, 172.1 yards rushing, and 191.1 yards passing per game last season. They bring back Joey Marisak at quarterback. They lost, uh, due to graduation, the all-time leading rusher in school history, John Murray Jr., but with that gets an opportunity for some of the younger kids to step up and fill that void, and it'll be Victor Ford Jr. listed as a starter, but expect to see a whole lot of DJ Griffiths in the backfield for the Yellow Jackets. The captains are meeting at midfield for the coin toss. Visitors, the Mount St. Joseph Lions will call the toss. start the 2023 season on defense they won the toss deferred their choice to the second half Mount St. Joseph will take the ball and they will give senior quarterback Josh Taylor first crack to try and get the offense on the board yeah and we'll see what he can do for an encore this season after putting up almost 3,100 yards and 41 combined touchdowns all purpose last year. So we'll see what he has in store this season and see if the BW Jackets can contain him. Yeah. 41 total touchdowns last year. That's an average of over four scores per game. Well, just under actually, because they put they made it to the playoffs, did Mount St. Joe's winning the HCAC. So just under four touchdowns a game. And when you're talking about putting up that kind of offensive production, uh, that's a good place to be. Those are good numbers to have. And that's going to catch the eyes of every defensive coordinator that Mount St. Joe's plays against this year. Not to mention they returned number zero Cornell Beecham as well, put up over 1,200 yards and 10 touchdowns last year. So that backfield and that zone read that they like to run is going to be something to watch today. It's going to be very tricky for the defense to figure out. Well, Taylor is a six foot, 220 pound senior. Cornell Beecham Jr. is just a sophomore. He did all of that damage as a freshman. 
This young man has a bright future ahead with Mount St. Joe's. No doubt about it. Hopefully not today, but we will see. The Yellow Jackets will go from right to left here in this first quarter. Mount St. Joe will go from left to right. And teeing it up, it'll be freshman kicker Joseph Evans, the Chardon, former Chardon Hilltopper, will get things going for the Yellow Jackets. Beecham and Turner back deep to return for Mount St. Joe's. underway here in the 2023 season. Ball is taken at the five by Beecham Jr. He runs it out left, gets past the 20, out past the 25, and just shy of the 30. Looks like they're going to mark him at the 27-yard line where Mount St. Joe's will start first and 10 against the Yellow Jacket defense. Starting it off for the Lions at quarterback, Josh Taylor. He's joined in the backfield by Cornell Beecham Jr. The tight end is Gary Powell. The wide receivers are Joey Newton and Austin Brock and Ari Turner. The left tackle, Colin Kandra. Left guard, Aiden Stuteville. The center is Danny Maybe. The right guard, Devin Sawyers. And the right tackle, Donnie Jones. Trips to the right. It'll be a handoff inside. The Yellow Jackets sniff it out. And that's going to be a tackle for lost yardage as Mariano McKenzie was in on the carry, and he was stopped. Well, actually, they're going to give him, well, they're going to call it a, game, a, a no game. So it's second and 10 for Mount St. Joe's. Yeah, beautiful job setting the edge there. They're going to need that all day because the zone read and the zone run, especially to the outside, are crucial to this Mount St. Joe's attack. Two wide receivers to the left of the formation, one out wide right. Taylor looking over the middle, floats a pass. It's complete to Beecham. He's tripped up just shy of midfield. First down for the Lions out to the Mount St. Joseph 48-yard line. Nice touch pass over the middle. Yeah, good little RPO there. And we've seen now Beecham as a wide receiver twice, not even in the backfield yet. So he, they're going to use him all over the field today. Taylor. Looking left, now surveys the field right. Looking down the field, throws it deep, it's caught. But is he inbounds? No, incomplete. That's Omar Porter Jr., the intended target, using every bit of his six foot three frame, but can't get a foot down inbounds. And that is beautiful coverage out there. Put a little stutter um, at the top of the route, but did not bite on the fake to the defensive back and a beautiful, beautiful job just to push him out of bounds nicely and not let him get that foot down. We'll get the Yellow Jacket defensive starters here after this next play. Three wide receivers to the right side of the formation and uh, one back in the backfield. That's McKenzie. Quick pass out right. It's complete to a Newton short gain across midfield. And out of bounds at the Yellow Jacket 49-yard line. Starting it off on the Yellow Jacket defense at defensive end, Jordan Smith and Haseem Rashid. At defensive tackle, Grant Davis and Bryce Sanders. The linebackers are Zach Soul, Mason Levisor, and Jonathan Dixon. At corner, Brandon Kelly and Jamar Worthy. The strong safety is Alden Steele and Brandon Seawright, the free safety. Four receivers on the field, two to the right, two to the left. Taylor alone in the backfield. He takes the snap, looking to his left, rolls out left, muscles it down the field, and it's incomplete. His wide receiver, Omar Porter Jr., never looked back for the ball. And the Yellow Jackets force the incompletion. Good pressure up front by the Yellow Jacket D-line. 
for sure. Not letting Taylor use those legs to escape either and then forcing him to make an inaccurate throw down the field with all the receivers blanketed. So beautiful coverage on third and long. Joel Clare on the punt. He's a 5'10", 200-pound freshman for Mount St. Joseph. Alden Steele back to return for BW. The snap is good. Claire gets it away cleanly, and it sails toward and into and out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. It'll be first and 10 Yellow Jackets at their own 20-yard line. And we're really looking for the Yellow Jackets offense to start fast. 55 points in first quarters last season to almost 86 points in the fourth quarter. So definitely want to avoid uh, getting into a habit of having to come back late in game. So it's really crucial for this offense to kind of step up and get it going out of the gate. And uh, tasked with that is Joey Marisak, the second-year quarterback for the Yellow Jackets. Marisak sends a receiver in motion. That's Elijah Arnett. Marisak's going to tuck it and run it across the 20, down to the 25 where he gets tripped up on the play. Nate Owens, the middle linebacker on the stop for Mount St. Joseph. Yeah, with all the talk about uh, Josh Taylor's legs on the other side, it's Marisak that gets the first run of the game for the quarterbacks going and a nice five-yard gain. And Marisak... He didn't do a whole lot of running last year. When they needed a running quarterback, they went more with Reese Wehmer, but Marisak definitely able to run the ball. Victor Ford Jr. with a full head of steam across the 30, out to the 33-yard line. It's a first down for the Yellow Jackets. Taking a look at the starters for the Yellow Jackets at wide receiver, it's Darius Stokes, Elijah Arnett, and Vinny Lomeo. At quarterback, Joey Marisak, the running back, Victor Ford Jr., the tight end, Jonah Schrock, and across the offensive line at left tackle, Gavin Varndell, left guard, George Newcomb, center, Dominic Biagiotti, right guard, Nick Messenger, and the right tackle, Cole Bryan. A run to the left side of the formation by Victor Ford, Jr., and he's stopped at the 31-yard line. It'll be a loss of two. That'll bring up second and 12 for the Yellow Jackets. And good job setting the, uh, setting the edge there by Brady, Brady Pierce, the outside linebacker. 4-2-5 look for Mount St. Joseph on uh, this second and long. The Yellow Jackets have three receivers out right, Stokes out left, and Victor Ford Jr. in the backfield. Marisek takes the snap. He's looking down the field. Now he's going to scramble. He's across the 35 to the 40, slides at the 43 he is right at the first down marker and it's gonna be enough for another yellow jacket first down yeah those shallow crossers splitting the middle zones there so great job of Marisic just taking what the defense gives him scrambling and picking up the first down staying on schedule so similar formation to the previous play three receivers out right Stokes one-on-one -on, -one on the left side with Victor Ford Jr. flanking Marisic in the shotgun Handoff inside to Victor Ford Jr. across the 45 out to the 46. Call it a gain of two on the play. Second and eight for the Yellow Jackets. DJ Griffiths will check in as will Jonah Schrock. Lomeo and Victor Ford Jr. will check out. Schrock will line up on the right side. Yellow Jackets going with a bunch look on that side with Elijah Arnett as well. Stokes out wide left. Marisek flares it out to Griffiths. Catches it in the backfield. Stutter steps as he gets to the line of scrimmage. Scoots toward midfield. And he will get out to the 50-yard line where he is stopped by the Lions. And they'll bring up a third and a long four on the play. Love, Lomeo, and Stokes go out left for the Yellow Jackets. Arnett, the lone receiver, out right. Now the Yellow Jackets go with a bunch look on the left. And all of the skill position players look toward the sideline to get the signal. Marichek checks the wristband. Switches Griffiths from left to right and then takes the shotgun snap. Marisek with a whole lot of pressure finds Lomeo for first down yardage in the Mount St. Joseph territory. 
Beautiful improv there by Marisek. He sees the blitz, gets out to the left where it's not coming, and then just a great job also by Vinny LaMeo to just break free of his man, keep his eyes on the quarterback, and pick up the first down. First and 10 Yellow Jackets at the Lions 43-yard line. Marisek takes the snap, looking right side. He's going to air it long. He's got a man open, oh. and he overshoots oh. Vinny LaMeo by about a yard and a half. Yeah, complete coverage breakdown. The linebacker covers late, um, gets LaMeo deep down the seam, wide open, and just out of his reach. So we'll see if they can they can come back to that later in the game and yeah, pick up on that. That's something you may want to keep in your back pocket and remember saying, hey, it almost worked. We just put a little bit too much underneath the ball. Let's try to get it this time. Love in the slot on the right side. Stokes out wide right. Yellow Jackets with a tight end and a wing on the left side. Love with the pitch from Marisak. He tripped five and goes down at the 44. Got bitten by the dreaded turf monster. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, yeah, that'll get you. But we've already seen a couple attempts um, from the Jacket offense to really stretch this defense out, whether it be bubble screens or that touch pass we just saw right there. So they're trying to attack the edges and get their playmakers in space early in this game. When you have the weapons that the Yellow Jackets do, that's never a bad strategy. Get the guys in space to make plays. Third and 11 for the Yellow Jackets and a flag on the play. Yep. It'll be a false start on the Yellow Jackets. So back them up five, and it'll be third and 16 from there, the Lions 49. Yeah, the Jackets 43% on third down last year, so we'll kind of see um, how they respond to this very crucial third and long in the first time in this game. Marisak takes the snap, surveys the field, looks right, throws over the middle. It's complete to Love. He bounces off of a tackler, and it dives ahead to the 36. He was a lot closer to the first down marker when he made that reception, but he got knocked back about four yards and was able to scramble and keep the play alive. Yeah, that's a situation where great contact balance actually went against him. His forward progress dragged back a couple yards there, and now about fourth and three. Sophomore wide receiver Tim Conwell has checked into the game. He'll bunch up on the right side with Elijah Arnett. He'll be in the slot. Four receiver look for the Yellow Jackets. Marisek takes the fourth and three snap. Steps out of a sack. Slips a pass to Stokes, and he overshot the target. Stokes was wide open. Nobody within eight yards of him, but Marisek facing some heavy pressure, throwing off his back foot, just sailed it a little too far. Yep, they sent both corners, so he knows he's got to get the ball out quick. Evades a sack, and then just out of the reach of his check down there, but... Uh, so far, liking what I'm seeing from the BW offense and their improv on these uh, these pass plays. So we'll just see if we can hook up on a few more of those uh, come the next time they're out on the field. The good thing is the opportunities are there. Now it's a matter of cashing them in. Taylor in the backfield, takes a snap, fakes the handoff. RPO throws out left, and oh, they're going to say it is a catch right at the sticks. That's a yeah, – I don't know about or that. Or they're – well, they're going to mark it a yard short. They're going to say it's at the 45. They need the 46. Eh, I agree with you, partner. That one was a little – I'd like to see a replay of that one. I mean, I thought Jamar Worthy, 29, had him blanketed. Beautiful coverage the whole way through. And it looked like it might have hit the ground. So second and one from the 45 for the Lions. Hand off inside. And carrying the ball is Jackson Gifford. And he lowers the shoulder and bowls his way ahead for a gain of th for a gain of three yards out to the 48 and a first down for Mount St. Joe's. Two receivers out left, two to the right for Mount St. Joseph. Taylor takes a snap, surveys left, now scrambles to his right. He's going to tuck it and run it into Yellow Jacket territory, and he's forced out at the BW 43-yard line. And he should be a yard short of the first down marker. We'll bring up second and short. 
Yeah, it's a tough one. All the zone zone rules are covered. No one's open. Everyone does their job, and then you've got a quarterback like Taylor who could just use his legs and pick up nine, ten yards with ease on those uh, on those quarterback improvs. Taylor taking a long time. We're under 10 on this play clock. He'll survey right. Now look left. He's going to throw it long down the middle of the field where it is caught. Wow. And there's a flag thrown making the reception. Joey Newton, pretty good coverage by the Yellow Jackets. That ball was right over the shoulder, though, for Newton. Oh, yeah, beautiful throw. I initially did not think he was going to have a chance to even run under it. And Newton, his favorite target on third down in this game last year, um, but it looks like this one's coming back. Maybe OPI. And Taylor trying to get an explanation from the back judge. Not sure he's going to like what he has to say. I don't think he did. <laughs> Offensive pass interference on Newton. So wipe out what would have been a Almost four, a 38 yard gain. And now second and one becomes second and long for Mount St. Joseph. And they go from the Yellow Jacket 43 to their own 42 yard line. So huge loss on the play. It'll bring up second and 16 now. And so far we're seeing really stout coverage um, in all phases by the, the PW secondary. Yeah. So let's hope they can keep that up. They're matching a very talented receiving core step for step. Now they just have to find a way to make some plays. Taylor takes the snap. He's flushed out of the pocket, rolling to his left. He's going to muscle it down the field. He's got Newton wide open oh. at the 10, and Newton will walk into the end zone for the Mount St. Joseph touchdown. I mean, that's kind of similar to the play we just saw on the on the BW side, uh, just keeping the play alive and throwing downfield. Your receiver can get open, especially a guy as talented as Newton. He just completely beats the zone back there, and um, no one left to stop him as he waltzes into the end zone. Kyle Farsing, the 6'4", 248-pound senior, on to attempt the extra point. Tyler Prather to hold. The kick is up. It's off the left upright and no good. I'm pretty sure the Yellow Jackets got a piece of that one. So the score remains Mount St. Joseph 6, Baldwin Wallace nothing. Yeah, that's, the, oh, that's what you're looking for. I mean, it's week one, so there's going to be breakdowns in coverage. There's going to be missed assignments. What you're really looking for is the energy on each play to respond and come back and fight, and that's what's going to tell us a lot about how this BW team is going to perform this year. Yeah, we'll see what the Yellow Jackets can do once the offense gets the ball back while well, we have uh, this opportunity. I want to remind you that today's Yellow Jacket football game is being brought to you by BSN Sports and Nike, the official apparel and uniform provider for Yellow Jacket Athletics. University Hospital is the proud medical provider for BW Athletics and its student athletes, and Dan Andrews and Olympic Forest Products, a global recycling company. Today's game is also being brought to you by the Oswald Company, risk and insurance leaders since 1893. Chuck Rotuno at OE Connection LLC, your global automotive technology provider. Medical Mutual of Ohio, the official healthcare provider of Baldwin Wallace University. Barron's Bus Lines, the official charter bus company of Yellow Jacket Athletics. Mike's Bar and Grill in downtown Berea, the home of the Monday Night Athletics Roadshow, and Antonio's Pizzeria of Middleburg Heights, the official pizza sponsor of Yellow Jacket Athletics. You're enjoying today's Yellow Jacket football game against Mount St. Joseph on BWYellowJackets.com and OAC TV. Farf Singh on the kick it away. Puts the right foot into it, and it is fielded by Love at the 13. He cuts back to the middle of the field, gets across the 20, and a late flag comes in along the BW sideline. And we will see what the call is on the play. Looks like early indication from the side judge is a hold against the Yellow Jackets. Well, 
that's good for the Yellow Jackets that I got that play wrong because it's a 15-yard penalty on Mount St. Joseph. That'll take the ball out to the BW 40-yard line where it'll be first and 10 Yellow Jackets. Marisak with three receivers in the formation and Schrock, the tight end on the right side. Handoff inside to uh, George Leinberger, and he gets to the 44-yard line, second and six for the Yellow Jackets. A yeah, really common formation we've seen from both sides there with that little wing back on the edge of the line and then just a zone up the middle. And you'll take four or five yards every run all day for sure. No doubt about that. The Yellow Jackets have an endless supply of running backs that can help with that. Three receivers to the right side. Marisak takes the snap. He's looking right. Steps out of one sack, but not able to step out of another as getting to him and bringing him down. Defensive tackle Jack Tucker, the 6'3", 244-pound senior. Yeah, and they're lucky they got to him there. Josh Skronk, the tight end, running free in the secondary. No safety in the deep third closest to us. So uh, very lucky they got to him. That could have been a huge play for the Jackets. Marisek takes the third and long snap, floats it over the middle, and it's caught for first down yardage deep in a Mount St. Joseph territory. Making the reception, number five, Connor Awad, the 6'4", 205-pound sophomore receiver. That's a nice target for the Yellow Jackets. First and 10 at the 20, Marisek takes the snap. He's looking left. Throws toward the end zone. It's caught by Stokes. That's first down yardage inside the five. First and goal, Yellow Jackets. Ball at the Mount St. Joseph, two. They're knocking on the door of even in the score here late in this first quarter. Lineberger, the lone back in the backfield. Marisak hands it to him. He'll run to the left side. Duck his shoulder, oh. plow towards the end zone, and he's going to be marked short by the head linesman. He's inside the one. And that shoulder sent the DB flying back. I'm surprised the ball didn't cross the plane there, but beautiful power running. 5'10", 225 goes Lineberger. That's a whole lot of human coming downhill at you. Not someone you want to see this close to the goal line come through a hole. Marisek goes under center, sends a receiver in motion, takes a snap, hands off to Lineberger. He's stacked up at the line of scrimmage and loses about a half a yard. He'll bring up third and goal for the Yellow Jackets. Lomeo and Stokes check in for the Yellow Jackets. Austin Schnuck checks out. Elijah Arnett hustles on late. And Awad will check out. The Yellow Jackets go with three receivers to the right. Schrock, the tight end on the left. And Lineberger, the lone back in the backfield. Marisak under center. Sends a man in motion. Throws a quick right side. It's a Yellow Jacket touchdown. That's Elijah Arnett for the game tying score. Beautifully designed play. Making the DB have to come over the screen. It is way too late because they only needed a yard. Like we said earlier, they're attacking the edges and it is working. All the playmakers getting involved on this drive and it's just a beautiful methodical score there for the Jackets to hopefully tie up this game. Evans on to attempt the extra point. Donovan Burkett will be the holder. Snap is back, ball is down, kick is up and the kick is good. The Yellow Jackets take a seven to six lead over the Mount St. Joseph Lions with 2.46 to go here in the first quarter of play from Trestle Field at the George Finney Stadium. Yeah, for better or worse, the Jackets 3-0 and last season when the opponent scores first. Um, so maybe just a, just a good fortune um, here for the Jackets. We'll see how that plays out this year. But, uh, yeah, just a beautiful drive there. 
Um, Morosik taking what he can down the field and then just the play design near the goal line to get it into the end zone was absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it was. And, and third and goal from the one, not your typical pass play on the screen, but it worked for the Yellow Jackets as Arnett squared up, gave Marisek a beautiful target, secured the catch, and then plowed through a couple of defenders to get into the end zone for the touchdown. And that's exactly what you want in week one, and like I talked about earlier. How will you respond uh, to the early adversity? And uh, we have our answer. The Jackets certainly not going away. Evans to kick it away for the Yellow Jackets. Turner. And Beecham Jr. back to return for the Lions. They're standing at the five and the four, respectively. Yellow Jackets going with an interesting formation on these kickoffs, bunching up eight of the 11 players. Evans puts a nice right foot into it. That'll back up the return Ooh. men. They'll bump into each other, but Turner Secures the catch, gets past the 20, out to the 25, and we have a flag on the play. One of the Yellow Jackets got tangled up with a Lions player, and that drew the flag. The ball is currently spotted at the 24-yard line. and the referee are having a conversation. Now the side judge will be involved. Call is a hold on Mount St. Joseph. Eli LaFrange whistled for the infraction. That'll back up Mount St. Joseph 10 yards to their own 15 yard line. Taylor brings three receivers out with Beecham, the lone back in the backfield. Two receivers to the right, one and one on one coverage out left. Taylor hands off to Beecham. He is swarmed at the line of scrimmage, and he's going to lose a yard back to the 14-yard line as the Yellow Jackets got in and collapsed the gap that he was trying to run through. Yeah, great job by the defense. That's what they're going to need. Um, the Lions were not particularly great in this game last year at converting long third downs. Um, so if they can get them off schedule, I think they'll be in for a really short day on the field is the Lions offense. Yellow Jackets doing some shuffling up front along that D-line. While well, Taylor awaits the snap, he gets it, fakes the handoff, looking left, pump fake. Now he's going to throw long down the left side, and he overshoots the intended target. That was Omar Porter Jr., who he was looking for. Yeah, and 12, Marquet Vereen, the DB on that side, did not at all bite on the pump fake, stayed true to his zone, that deep, um, that deep half over there. Did exactly what he's supposed to do, just forced him out of bounds and no catch allowed. Now we've got a third and long, and let's see what kind of scheme the Yellow Jackets run here. Third and 11 for Mount St. Joseph. George Newcomb, the left guard for the Yellow Jackets, just jumped up on the bleachers, trying to rev up the crowd a little bit, make it loud on his third down. Two receivers left, two to the right. Taylor takes the snap, looking right, steps up, and will be taken down in the backfield as a sack. For the Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets, Kyle Langenbrunner, the lead tackler on the play. Yeah, and what you'll see there on the long third downs is they drop off the two inside linebackers on the blitz, but one of them is going to stay around to spy Taylor because of how dangerous he is with his legs. And as soon as he got out of the pocket and looked to start running, they closed instantly and got the sack. That's an impeccable job on third and long. Like I said, they're not too great. They weren't too great at that last year, and we'll see if they can do that again this year. Fourth and 19 for Mount St. Joseph, and they'll punt 
from deep in the back of their own end zone. Claire gets the snap, gets the kick away cleanly. It's a good one. It'll be taken by the Yellow Jackets at the 42-yard line, and they're going to start with great field position as they get the ball out to the 40 or the 34-yard line, I should say. Alden Steele on the return. I mean, that's exactly how you want your defense to look on third down, flying around, getting after it, and just putting the quarterback on the ground. And now you give your offense about 35 yards to go to get to the end zone. Impeccable starting field position. And let's see if the Yellow Jackets can catch it in. Three receivers bunched left. It's Stokes on the line. And about a yard off each are Love in the slot and Arnett. Marisak sends Arnett in motion. And he'll hand to Victor Ford Jr. Ford looking for a seam. Gets a gain of one to the 33 yard line. Second and nine coming up for the Yellow Jackets. Arnett and Stokes go out wide right. Stokes will actually be in the slot. A wing on the right side or left side for the Yellow Jackets. Marisak fakes the handoff to Stokes. Now gives it to Ford Jr. He's stacked up at the line and pushed back about a foot. The ball will still be spotted at the 33-yard line, so it'll be third and long for the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, not much doing on the inside runs today. Got to give credit to the Lion defense for kind of just walling off the middle and not allowing any space to the BW tailbacks. The Yellow Jackets do not have to run another play, and it doesn't look like they will as the clock is at two seconds, one second, and that will bring the first quarter to a close. The baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets lead the Mount St. Joseph Lions 7-6 to six after the first quarter of play from here at Trestle Field inside the George Finney Stadium on the campus of baldwin Wallace University. Yellow Jackets recognizing Anthony Kendall, who was an All-American for BW last year. He made the 53-man roster for the Tennessee Titans out of training camp. Kendall was signed as an undrafted free agent on May 12th, and he becomes just a second BW football player in the last 12 years to sign with an NFL team. Congratulations to Anthony on making his pro dreams come true. And we wish him the best of luck uh, over his time in the NFL. And in a couple of weeks, he'll actually be back in Cleveland with the Titans as they take on the Browns down by the lake. Third and nine for the Yellow Jackets. Ball at the Mount St. Joseph 33-yard line on this first play of the second quarter. Marisak takes the shotgun snap. Big pressure and a sack for Mount St. Joseph. Shooting through on the blitz. Declan Brophy, he jarred the ball loose from Marisak, who was able to get a hand back on it and recover his own fumble. That'll bring up fourth and long for the Yellow Jackets, and they call on Dylan Kuman to punt. Yeah, Brophy with seven and a half sacks last year, their second leading sack, sacker, and then the, obviously they lost um, their leading sacker in um, Noah Hammond, who had 10 last year. So um, Brophy definitely stepping up and continuing uh, his dominance. Coyman on the punt. He takes the snap, gets it away cleanly, skies it, on the right side of the field. It bounces at the 26 and will roll to a stop at the 25 yard line where Mount St. Joseph will have a first and 10.
Taylor with two receivers in the formation, one out wide left, one out wide right, two tight ends, and then he'll hand off. The Yellow Jackets sniff it out, and it'll be a short gain for Devin Holt. Devin Holt's going to need a new uh, undershirt or a new jersey because one of the Yellow Jackets got a hold of it. That thing ripped and stretched pretty well. Yeah, Jonathan Dixon shooting through number zero there. Um, Kuzas got a hold of his shirt. And uh, that was now. enough for the Yellow Jacket, the rest of the Yellow Jackets to swarm and get the stop. Second and eight, handoff, or fake handoff by Taylor, and he'll be bottled up right at the line of scrimmage by the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, there's that zone read. They love to run that last year, ran it about five times on the first drive last year. We haven't seen it really yet today. And uh, obviously the BW defense prepared for it this time around and a beautiful yeah. stop there. Yeah, Haseem Rashid in on the stop for the Yellow Jackets. Just a sophomore, this young man is all over the field at 6'4", 220, good size, good speed, able to wreak havoc against opposing offenses. Third and eight from the 27 for the Lions. Three receivers in the formation. Taylor looking left all the way, throws it, and it sails incomplete. Newton thought he was interfered with by Worthy. Newton had inside position, but the pass went wide to his right. It'll bring up fourth down. And Jamar Worthy has been all over these receivers today, just blanketing them. He knows he's alone on an island out there against probably their best pass catcher, and he holds his own incredibly well and gets the pass breakup to send the Lions to punt. Joe Claire on the punt. And he gets it away. It takes a nice Mount St. Joseph bounce to 41, and it'll be fielded at the BW 36-yard line. BW not with... Not with bad field position to start this drive here. We'll see what they can do after being set up on a short field and not able to secure a block on third and long on their last down, last set of downs they had to punt. Marisak flanked by two backs in the backfield. He has two receivers out left, one out right. That's Elijah Arnett. Marisek hands off inside. It's DJ Griffiths. He gets back to the line of scrimmage, maybe gains a half a yard, and that's it. Mount St. Joseph sniffs it out and stops the play before it can get going. Yeah, these interior guys for the Lions have been doing a wonderful job of block shedding so far. And so we'll see if uh, the interior of the Jackets line can uh, get it figured out and uh, Gain some more yards. Second and 10 from the Yellow Jacket 36 yard line. Marisek with three receivers out left, a tight end on the right side. Hand off to Victor Ford Jr. He's across the 35, spins at the 39, gets across the 40, and out near the 42, call it the 41 yard line. Good bit of running, a good second, third, fourth, and fifth effort by Ford to keep the play alive. Yeah, he's going to handle the, the load this year for the offense, only 66 attempts last year, but uh, we see he is explosive and he is determined back there when he's got the ball. Third and five for the Yellow Jackets from their own 41-yard line. Marisek calls for the snap. It was a hard count. Now the Yellow Jackets will look to the sideline to get the signals. Marisek with a quick check of that wristband on the left arm. He resets the offense. Calls for the snap, looks over the middle, and it's complete for first down yardage, but a fumble on the play, and it's recovered by the Lions. Connor Awad with the reception and big first down yardage for the Yellow Jackets, and he got stripped of the football trying to fight down the field. Yeah, beautiful route, beautiful throw, and a beautiful move to get himself some more space. But uh, just like the DBs are taught, come up and punch that ball out, and that's what happened right there. And uh, just a turnover, and uh, shame, because it would have been great field position 
uh, for the Jackets and a huge first down. But uh, now we'll see what the defense can do. Well, the ball is spotted at the Mount St. Joseph 35-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Lions. 11.07 to go here in the second quarter. The Yellow Jackets with a 7-6 lead over Mount St. Joseph. Taylor with two backs in the backfield. One receiver out left, one out right. Hand off to Beecham Jr. And his helmet comes off, and he is stacked up at the 37-yard line. But the Mount St. Joseph Lions are probably going to get a few more yards out of that because some flags were thrown and it could be a face mask on the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, it looked like his helmet got yanked off there by a hand. Uh, so, yeah, definitely think uh, they're going to be going forward. Yep, personal foul against the Yellow Jackets. It's a 15-yard penalty. Caden Viancourt whistled for the infraction. And that'll move the ball up to the Yellow Jacket 46-yard line. First and 10, Lions. Man set in motion from left to right. And it'll be Taylor on the carry. He gains two yards before he is stopped by the Yellow Jackets. Lion Court and Kraus on the combined stop for the Yellow Jackets. Second and eight from the BW 44 yard line. Taylor takes the snap, hands off to Beecham Jr. He's across the 35 to the 34, and it's a first down for the Lions. Yeah, we st uh, the game started off with uh, Beecham uh, going out, out wide as he is now, but we've seen a lot more of him in the backfield. They're trying to get him going in that running game as of late. Taylor takes the first down snap. He's flushed out of the pocket to the right side. Flag on the play. He muscles it down the field into the end zone, and it's incomplete as it was dropped by Omar Porter, Jr., I don't know that it would have mattered much had it been completed anyway because there is a flag on the play and it's in the area of a hold. We will see what the indication is. Yeah, especially when you've got a quarterback coming out of the pocket that, that lineman tries to just bind him a few more time uh, by getting his hands on a defensive end. But uh, yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I think uh, this one's probably coming back. The officials will actually pick up that flag. They're going to say that the illegal block was actually deemed to be legal. Second down and 10 for Mount St. Joseph from the Yellow Jacket 33-yard line. We're inside 10 minutes to go here in this first half from Trestle Field. Taylor with four receivers in the formation. Now he sends the lone back out right. He's looking right, throws it down the field, and Porter Jr. makes the reception for first down yardage right at the 19-yard line. Gain of 14 on the play. And we saw the motion of the running back there, kind of letting the quarterback know he's got a little bit of man coverage on the outside. So um, great job by the receiver there, working back to the ball um, and putting him first down. Taylor throws it out to the right side, and it is again complete to Porter Jr. Jamar Worthy will force him out of bounds. Late flag as well. The Yellow Jackets whistled for another personal foul face mask. And that'll give Mount St. Joseph a first and goal from the Yellow Jacket seven yard line.
Taylor in a shotgun formation. Now he takes a couple steps up before dropping back. Switches the running back from the right to the left side. And looks to the right side. Throws a fade to the corner of the end zone. And it is complete for the Mount St. Joseph touchdown. Caden Pollard, the 6'4 junior wide receiver on the reception for Mount St. Joseph. And they are back in front 12-7 with 8.58 to go in this second quarter. And the Lions just go to that height advantage on the outside. 6'4", just throw that back shoulder fade. And a really good ball placement there by Taylor as well. Uh, allows this receiver to go up and get it and get the feed in for a touchdown. After the missed extra point, following the first touchdown, Mount St. Joseph lined up to go for two. The Yellow Jackets will burn their first time out of the half. And while we have this break in the action, we want to remind you, that today's Yellow Jacket football game against Mount, Un uh, Mount St. Joseph, excuse me, is being brought to you by BSN Sports and Nike, the official apparel and uniform provider for Yellow Jacket Athletics, University Hospitals, the medical provider for BW Athletics and its student athletes, and Dan Andrews and Olympic Forest Products, a global recycling company. Today's game is also being brought to you by the Oswald Company, risk and insurance leaders since 1893. Chuck Rattuno and OE Connection LLC, your global automotive technology provider. Medical Mutual of Ohio, the official health care provider of Baldwin Wallace University. Barron's Bus Lines, the official charter bus company of Yellow Jacket Athletics. Mike's Bar and Grill in downtown Berea, the home of the Monday Night Athletics Roadshow. And Antonio's Pizzeria of Middleburg Heights, the official pizza sponsor of Yellow Jacket Athletics. You are enjoying today's Yellow Jacket football game on BWYellowJackets.com and OAC. TV. First and goal for the Lions. Ball at the Yellow Jacket, or actually, no, the tech two point conversion attempt is picked off by the Yellow Jackets, and they have a chance to return this for a safety. Hustling down the field, it's Alden Steele, and he's oh. tripped up at the 15 yard line. 80, 88 yards on a return and he can't finish it off. That is a depressing end of what was a great play by the Yellow Jackets. And that was Taylor, the quarterback, who actually caught him, who threw the interception, turned around, sprinted 80 yards, and caught a DB mid-stride and tripped him up. And uh, you, you hate to see that. It's, uh, you think you're going to get two points, and then right away you go down, and uh, that's got to be disheartening. Oh, man, that was, that was some kind of play by Olin Steele. <laughs> And, and man, I do not. I would not want to be Alden Steele in the meetings <laughs> with the defensive backs this week because you know he is going to get a bunch of grief getting tracked down by a quarterback. Oh yeah, <laughs> might be a rough, rough Monday and Tuesday, and then that film room for sure. <laughs> a but, little uh, bit, yeah. But <laughs> but when you make plays like that, I guess they can't get too mad at you. You you prevented the opponent from scoring points, and that's ultimately what your job is as a defender. Exactly. So the two-point conversion attempt obviously was no good, and the Lions have failed on their PAT tries today as the first hit off the upright, and then they had the one the one just previously intercepted. They trail, or they lead the Yellow Jackets, I should say, 12 to seven with 8.58 to go here in the first half. Yeah, and so far we've seen a good battle between these two teams, just like it was last year, and um Great start to open the season on a beautiful day. And now we'll see how the Yellow Jackets respond after the second Lions score. Farf Singh on the kick it off for the Lions. Love and Stokes back deep to return. It'll be Love at the 10. Catching it, getting to the middle of the field. Falling a block from Stokes. Getting across the 30. And then getting driven back to the 25 by, eh, call it about nine different Lions players <laughs> combining on the tackle. But it'll be first and 10 Yellow Jackets at the 31 yard line, their own 31. I'm interested to see how the Jackets uh, go about attacking this drive. Uh, they started off the last few with a few runs that haven't gotten a ton of yards, so I wanna see if they'll maybe try to go to the air earlier to stay ahead of schedule. Well, this is a good formation to do that as they have three receivers out left and Elijah Arnett in one-on-one -on -one coverage out right. 
DJ Griffiths to back in the backfield next to Marisek on the right side. Marisek takes the snap. Heavy pressure from the left side. He muscles it down the right side of the field, and a flag is thrown. Conwell was the intended target, and I believe he drew a pass interference penalty, but we shall see. Well, any, anytime you see the, uh, the receiver falling before the ball arrives, it's a pretty good shot, but um, a lot of contact as they went up the seam there, so we'll see who this is on. Official conversations never work out how you want them to. <laughs> we will see what the call is. No foul on the play, so that'll bring up second and 10 for the Yellow Jackets from their own 31-yard line. I guess it was deemed that there was enough contact going back and forth that a no call was probably the best way to go. That's how it initially looked to me, I thought. And I would agree. The fan in me wanted it to go the <laughs> other way, but I'll, uh, Griffiths fumbles, oh. and it's recovered by the Lions. That'll be recovered at the Yellow Jacket 27-yard line. And just what you didn't want to have happen, set up the Lions on a short field. Yeah, I mean, that's unfortunate. Not too uncommon to see really early in the season. A lot of teams with the exchanges take a while to get that down. Um, but definitely a drive killer. And now, now uh, we're still going to see how the Jackets are going to respond uh, once again to the adversity being thrown at them early this season. Well, maybe Alden Steele can get a shot at redemption <laughs> after intercepting the two-point conversion and being stopped short of a safety by the quarterback. Oh, no one wants it more than him, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Full house backfield with Taylor handing it off to Beecham Jr. He gets out to the right side, and he'll be stacked up at the 24-yard line. So gain of three on the play, bring up a second and seven. Yeah, that zone inside uh, has not, those dive plays have not really been working really either way. So um, a good battle in the trenches so far. Definitely keep your eyes on that as we go along here because uh, the line play is where this game will be won or lost. Eight minutes to go here in this second quarter. Taylor takes the snap. Fakes a handoff, throws left and sails it wide into the left side of Newton. That'll bring up third and long. Tell you what, even off of his back foot or with the defender hanging on him, Taylor has a cannon for an arm, and he puts a lot of heat on it when yeah. he's slinging the ball. Oh, for sure. He's got a cannon, but he's also a really good decision maker. Yeah, um, he is. You see him take what the defense gives him. He'll use his legs when he needs to use his legs, and he'll put it up when he needs to put it up. So um, a really talented all-around quarterback, and he's definitely uh, one of the better ones BW is going to see this year. Taylor with two receivers out left, two to the right. He's looking right, throws it, and it's complete short of the first down marker, depending on the spot. And it's down to the 19-yard line. Quick math tells me that that would bring up a fourth and two. As we hit the midway point of this second quarter, the Yellow Jackets of Baldwin-Wallace Trail, the driving Mount St. Joseph Lions 12-7. Play clock has been reset. A lot of options uh, for Mount St. Joseph here. You assume that this is probably four down territory as they haven't even tried to kick the extra point after that first miss. So you assume they might go for it, not too confident in the kicking game either way. So we'll see what they do on fourth down here. I mean, the options are, are many. You could try a hard count. to try and draw the Yellow Jackets off sides and get the free five yards to convert the first. You could also trust Beecham Jr. or Taylor, for that matter, to run the ball. Or you could try to catch the Yellow Jackets napping and uh, throw a pass to Newton, who's in one-on-one -on -one coverage on the left side. They do love those zone read options on uh, 
on these short yardage puts the defense in a bind. Taylor takes the snap. He's going to run it himself outright, and he's got first down yardage. Or I should say he's close to first. Yep, he will have just enough. And by just enough, I mean by a foot, he has a first down. That'll move the ball to the 17-yard line, first and 10 for Mount St. Joseph. I call it the 16. Taylor takes the snap, fakes the handoff inside, throws it down the right side of the field where it's caught by Porter Jr. for the touchdown. Worthy was in one-on-one -on -one coverage. I don't know that there was much more he could have done no. to try and prevent that completion. Yeah, that's a tough two sequences for Jamar Worthy. Two, two just jump balls thrown right over there. Uh, the Jackets send pressure on that first down there, and uh, they don't get home, and so instantly – uh, Taylor knows, well, I got to get this out, and he gets it right to his receiver. Once again with the height advantage jump ball and comes down with it. We've seen some great contested catches, though, from the Lions so far. We sure have. I mean, they, if you look at their lineup, they have some some height advantages going their way. Farfsing's kick is up, and it is good. He's now one of two on the day, and he gives the Lions a 19-7 lead over the Yellow Jackets with 6.34 to play here in this first half. Porter Jr. now with two touchdowns on the day for Mount St. Joseph. Check that, one touchdown. Joey Newton has the 58-yard opening score, and then Caden Pollard had a seven-yard score earlier in the second quarter. The Yellow Jackets' lone score, a one-yard pass from Marisek to Elijah Arnett at the 246 mark of the first quarter. Yellow Jackets losing that turnover battle as they have lost two of their three fumbles. And that's set up the Lions on two scoring drives. Parfsing's kick fielded at the four by Love. Love looking for a couple blocks, and he gets spun down at the 13-yard line. Pretty sure that in a film session, on a Monday, there's going to be an MA assigned to a couple of young men up the middle of the field. Uh, yeah, great job filling their rush lanes over there by the Lions. And, uh, yeah, obviously, Coach is not going to be happy about that one. A dangerous play, too, when your uh, returner gets a free hit on him like that, just so fast coming down the field. First and 10 Yellow Jackets ball at the 13-yard line, their own 13-yard line. Two receivers go out left, two go out right. It's Arnett and Conwell on the right side. Conwell in the slot. Marisek looking right, throws it for Arnett. He catches it at the 28, hustles it down, to the, down the field, in the Lions territory, taken down at the Mount St. Joseph 40-yard line. 47 yards on the reception for Elijah Arnett. And that is the kind of play the Yellow Jackets needed to get everybody energized back on the sideline. Oh, yeah, took advantage of a miscommunication by the safety in the corner on that side. Neither of them picked up the receiver there. And uh, then Arnett just dragging safety Austin Pierce down the field for about 20 extra yards, and that's what you need to get you going. Sideline warning issued to Mount St. Joseph. That's their first of the game. Five receiver look for the Yellow Jackets. Three to the left, two to the right. Marisek takes the snap, looking left all the way, throws it to Stokes. Stokes catches it at the 37 and gets out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Gain of five on the play. And now we've seen the Jackets go to the air 
quite a bit in the last couple drives. Uh, not going to risk any more fumbles or miss handoffs on the ground right now. So they're just going to take what the defense gives them and try to punch this in. Well, they're also trying to prove that they can hit you in multiple ways. They don't need to just run the ball to be successful. Conwell on the out route, catches it and gets it close to first down yardage. They're going to say he's a yard short. Yep, it'll, it'll bring up third and one. Oh, hold on. The chains are moving. But the ball didn't reach the 30. I don't think they gave it to him. Though. I, I think there's some miscommunication yeah. between the chains and the officials because the officials are marking him back now. Mm. So it'll bring up third and short. Call it one. That's really half a yard that they need. And they'll bring in the big fellas, the tight ends, Jonah Schrock and Austin Schnuck. And Victor Ford checking back in as well. Elijah Arnett and Stokes act as wings on the left and right sides, respectively. Marisek takes the snap, calls his own number, and pushes the ball to the 29-yard line for a yellow jacket first down. First and 10 Yellow Jackets, ball at the Mount St. Joseph 29-yard line as we approach five minutes to go here in this first half of play from Trestle Field at the George Finney Stadium. Five receiver look for the Yellow Jackets, three on the right side. Marisek's looking right, now he's flushed left. He's got some blockers, Get hustles out of bounds at the 23-yard line. Hey, yep, call it the 22-yard line. So it'll be a gain of seven. That'll bring up a second and three for the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, the Lions with eight in coverage there. They only brought three, so nothing open down the field. And when you only bring three, it's really hard to keep your edges, especially when they run that little stun inside like they did, and then Marisek takes advantage and gets out for five yards. So again, five receiver look for the Yellow Jackets. Marisek all by himself in the backfield. He'll call his own number again, hustle up the middle, dive inside the 15. And he has another yellow jacket. First down. Yellow jackets going with a more conventional look as Conwell will check out. Stokes and Arnett go out wide to the right. Lameo in the slot on the right side and Victor Ford Jr. the back in the backfield. He'll take the handoff, get it across the 10. Spinton's down to the six and he'll have a second and one for the Yellow Jackets. And we saw him clutching that ball extra tight as he went <laughs> down to the ground. No more fumbles today um, is the message from the staff. Bunch receivers to the left. Victor Ford Jr. takes the handoff up the middle and depending on the spot, yeah, he's going to be a yard short, it looks like. So no gain on the play. Third and third and one for the Yellow Jackets. Marisek falls his left tackle. George Newcomb and gets the first down at the Mount St. Joseph three-yard line. So it'll be first and goal for the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, what better way to pick up a first down when you only need a yard? Send your 6'2", 215 pound senior quarterback right up the middle. Yeah. Hard to stop that one. It's a pretty nice option <laughs> to have, not going to lie. <laughs> Two receiver look for the Yellow Jackets. Marisek in a shotgun formation. Two tight ends on the right side. He's looking left, throws it, and it's off the fingertips of Jake Nanoski. Nanoski listed as 6'7", 210 out of Medina. That's a heck of a target in short yarded situations <laughs> right there. Nanoski goes into slot on the right side. Arnett out wide. Victor Ford Jr., the back in the backfield. Marisette gives it to him. Ford Jr. plows his way toward the end zone, and he's taken down inside the one. Third and goal for the Yellow Jackets. Now the Yellow Jackets bunch toward the line of scrimmage. Wonder Marisek under center. <laughs> Marisek runs to the right side, dives across the goal line, and he's in for the Yellow Jacket touchdown. BW cuts the deficit to six. 
could be five pending the extra point coming up from freshman Joseph Evans. And Donovan Burkett on to hold. The long snapper is Tim Conwell, the wide receiver. Snap back, ball down, kick up, and the kick is good. The Yellow Jackets cut the deficit to five as they trail Mount St. Joseph 19 to 14 with 2.41 to play in the second quarter. That's a nice response drive for the Yellow Jackets and a much needed one after uh, two of their previous three possessions ended in turnovers and then led to Mount St. Joseph scores. Yeah, really impressive response, especially early in this game. And uh, really adaptable drive as well. We saw we saw them start out in empty formation, about five or six plays, and then they go back down to that more conventional two tight end, halfback, fullback look. And, uh, and a drive that featured about four or five quarterback sneaks. They get it in on one. And, um, yeah, beautiful response. And right back in this game with the Jackets. Yeah, they had a little bit of everything. And it had the ending that the Yellow Jackets wanted because they ended in that end zone for the touchdown. And now they give themselves a little bit of an opportunity to build some momentum here going in to the halftime break. Maybe they can get another stop. They do have two timeouts left here in this first half. So if they get a couple of plays uh, for negative yardage or no gain, maybe they call one of those timeouts, try to preserve some of the clock and give the offense one more crack before halftime. Evans tees it up at the 35. Chargers puts the right foot into it, and it's taken by Beecham Jr. at the 8. He hustles to the middle of the field, looking to get to the left side, has a blocker, bounces off of that blocker, gets to the 25, now dives to the 30 and could be out to the 31-yard line depending upon the spot. A good return right there by Beecham Jr. Yeah, certainly an extremely elusive back out there. Um, fortunately, BW has been able to bottle him up pretty well in this game. We haven't seen him do too many explosive plays. It's been mostly the jump balls that have hurt the jacket so far. So let's see what they have as a response defensively um, now that they've given up points in these last couple drives. First and 10 Lions at their own 31-yard line. Taylor has two receivers outright, one to the left and one back in the backfield. Taylor sends a man in motion from right to left. He'll hand it off, and the Yellow Jackets sniff it out, and they'll wrap up the ball carrier for a modest gain. That's Ari Turner on the carry for Mount St. Joseph. And these edge, edge defenders and edge cornerbacks have done a beautiful job of uh, spreading the field out and spacing the edges so that there is nowhere for that jet motion man to run. And then obviously the option picked up on the backside as well. And just a beautiful, beautifully schemed defensive response there on the first play of this drive. Timeout on the field by the Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets. They have one more to go. 2-10 left in this first half. The Yellow Jackets trail the Lions 19-14. Matt Florjancic and Logan Rogers on the call of today's home and season opener for the Yellow Jackets. And this is the 45th Lee Trestle Shrine Classic. Partial gate proceeds from the game will go to the Shriners Hospitals. A player from each team will be honored as their team's respective player of the game following this contest. While we have this break in the action, I want to remind you that today's Yellow Jacket football game is being brought to you by BSN Sports and Nike, the official apparel and uniform provider for Yellow Jacket Athletics, University Hospitals, the medical provider for BW Athletics and its student athletes, and Dan Andrews and Olympic Forest Products, a global recycling company. Today's game is also being brought to you by the Oswald Company, risk and insurance leaders since 1893. Chuck Rotuno and OE Connection LLC, your global automotive technology provider, and Medical Mutual of Ohio, the official health care provider of Baldwin Wallace University. Today's game is also being brought to you by Barron's Bus Lines, the official charter bus company of Yellow Jacket Athletics, Mike's Bar and Grill in downtown Berea, the home of the Monday Night Athletics Roadshow, and Antonio's Pizzeria of Middleburg Heights, the official pizza sponsor of Yellow Jacket Athletics. You are enjoying today's season opener on BWYellowJackets.com and OAC TV. Second and long for the Lions. Taylor fakes the handoff, looking deep down the right side. He'll be forced out of the pocket, and it's knocked away by the Yellow Jackets. Coming in to break up the pass 
It's Zach Soul. A, f flag, a flag on the, the play. End. Right at the end of the play. I mean, they had a beautiful stunt game up front on where the ends looped in and the tackles came out to limit the scramble of Taylor. And then beautiful coverage on the back end to knock that ball away. Looked clean to me. Well, the defender has a right to go for the ball just yeah, as much does. as the receiver does. Defensive pass interference whistled against senior linebacker Mason Levisor. And that will give Mount St. Joseph a first and 10 at the Lions 39-yard line. It's an eight-yard an eight penalty based on the spot. But more importantly, the Yellow Jackets, or rather the Lions, have a new set of downs. Four receiver look for the Lions. Now Taylor sends Beecham Jr. out left. He'll swing it to Newton in the slot. Newton spins out of a tackle across midfield and gets to the Yellow Jacket 49-yard line. A first down for Mount St. Joseph. And this was the adjustment the Jackets made last year. Go to that three-man rush and then that middle five zones and a good response here by the Lions by spreading it out and getting a short completion. Taylor takes a snap quickly to the left side, completes another pass to Cam York, and he gets it down to the BW 43-yard line. Clock is running. The play was stopped inbounds. Sure, they would have liked York to get out of bounds there, especially on a short catch, but uh, stays in and gives the Jackets some more, more time to burn. Taylor looking right, throws it right. It's complete to Porter Jr. And he has first down yardage down to the Yellow Jacket 35-yard line. And he does get out of bounds to stop the clock with 1.16 to go here in the first half. This really shows us the kind of maturity as a quarterback of Taylor. Just kind of taking, not trying to take a deep shot, knowing they need a lot of yards, but just taking the short and intermediate throws and moving him down the field. So we'll see how the Jacket defense can respond. Take what the defense gives you, and that's exactly what Taylor is doing. Two receivers left, two to the right. Taylor takes the snap. He's looking left all the way, stays in the pocket, absorbs a hit, but leaves it short for Newton, and that's an incompletion. Yeah, beautiful pressure there. Get the lineman thinking the middle linebacker is coming, and then he drops off, and then the two outside corners come in, and they're able to get a hit on Taylor and force an incompletion. Um, so a really well-designed defensive play call there from the Jackets. Second and 10 for the Lions. Ball at the 35-yard line of the Yellow Jackets. 1-12 to go in this first half. Mount St. Joseph looking to build on a five-point advantage. They lead the Yellow Jackets. 19 to 14. Taylor takes the snap, looks right, looks left, now looks right again, muscles it down the field and sends it out of bounds with some heat coming from the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, really nice pass rush there. And if you're able to get home with only three guys rushing, it's going to make it really tough on the QB to find some lanes to throw the ball. Yeah, R.J. Pagiz really helped blow up that play for the Ly against the Lions. And Mount St. Joseph will burn their first of three timeouts here in the first half with 106 to go in the second quarter. Yeah, we'll see what the, the Jackets can do. Um, yeah, Mount St. Joseph has not been great on third and longs today. Um, and I expect the Jackets to come back out in that, uh, that kind of cover three with five underneath and three rushing look. Um, but we'll see what they kind of they, they want to force uh, Mount Joseph to do and where they want them to go with the ball. Um, but if you can get off the field here, I think there might be some time. You've got one more timeout. At least try to get yourself in field goal range. Um, so I think this is a pretty big play for the Jacket defense. Yeah, absolutely. And most importantly, the job number one, just keep Mount St. Joseph off the scoreboard. If you can do that, then you set yourself up to start the second half, getting the kickoff, and then letting the offense go to work. But first and foremost, have to get this third down stop.
Three receivers bunched to the right. One in one-on-one -on -one coverage on the left. And one back in the backfield. Taylor takes the snap. He's looking right all the way. Throws it down the field, and it's caught for first down yardage by Austin Brock. And then another great touch pass there by Taylor right on the back shoulder on the sideline. And after the, the middle linebackers drop off into their zones, um, he's got enough time to just kind of place that ball nicely and uh, first down for the Lions. Very methodical approach for this Lions offense. Taylor takes a snap at the 20, throws it left, right side, and it oh. is broken up by the Yellow Jackets. Swarming in at the last second, free safety, Brandon C. right there to break up the play. I mean, that's beautiful coverage. You've got your, that's his responsibility over there in that deep half, and that's exactly how you want your safety closing on the ball. Gets there right in time, no defensive pass interference, knocks that ball out with his hands just to textbook's free safety play there by C. Wright. Three receivers spread out on the left side of the formation, one to the right for Mount St. Joseph. Taylor takes the snap. He's looking left, flush to his left. Muscles it down the field, and it's incomplete off the hands of Cam York. York was going to his left. The pass sailed to his right. He did his best to reach back, but he wasn't able to catch it. Yeah, and they've got that spy there. Number zero, Jonathan Dixon. As soon as Taylor gets outside the pocket, he does a really good job of chasing after him and not allowing him to use his legs to extend that play. Yeah, that's key. I mean, the Yellow Jackets have done a good job to this point to really prevent Taylor from affecting the game in a positive way with his legs. And when you look at what he's been able to do, it hasn't been much running the football. Just four attempts for five yards. And Cornell Beecham Jr., for that matter, four attempts for 20 yards. Yeah. It's been the aerial game for Mount St. Joseph that's carried the mail today. Taylor, 13 of 23, 180 yards, three touchdowns, no turnovers. And if you really look at it, most of those are coming off of the Baldwin Wallace offensive turnovers, giving them great field position to take those end zone shots. So if you can limit your turnovers on the offensive side, you've done a really good job stopping them to this point. This is really one of the only times we've seen them have a methodical drive down the field without being aided by a BW turnover. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking of turnovers, the Yellow Jackets would like to force one before the yes, end of the first would. half. 48 seconds left. Third and long for Mount St. Joseph. Two receivers to each side of the formation. And Beecham Jr., the lone back in the backfield with Taylor. Taylor takes the snap. Looks left. Flushed out of the pocket. Muscles it off the hands of a receiver in the end zone who was wide open. And that will bring up fourth down. Taylor visibly frustrated with the receiver on that play. Yeah, I don't, that would have been a really, really nice catch had he come down with it, kind of coming back to it and sliding into the end zone. Um, but once again, that spy that the Jacket defense is using on Taylor, forcing him to abort running up the middle there, and I think that's been one of their most effective defensive strategies here today. Taylor was close to the line of scrimmage when he let that ball go. I'm surprised he was still in the backfield. Fourth down and 10 for the Mount St. Joseph Lions. Taylor with five wide receivers on the field. Three to the left, two to the right. The two of the three on the left don't know really what play was called. Taylor muscles it down the field, and it's broken up by the Yellow Jackets. Alden Steele comes up with the PBU against Austin Brock. Yeah, and he initially lost space to him coming up the seam, and then he just beautifully just keeps running and then turns his head around at the last second to get that ball get a hand on the ball and knock it away. I mean, that's beautiful coverage. They showed blitz. They sent they sent up uh, a couple linebackers. One of them came free, forced a quick throw, and uh, I really think the pressure was key to the stops that they made there. A lot of hurried throws and off-target throws while running from Taylor on that drive, not giving him a chance to set his feet, and I think that's what really helped them get off the field there. So the turnover on downs give the Yellow Jackets the ball first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. They have just one timeout left. 38 seconds before halftime, they trail the Lions 19 to 14. Four wide receiver look, two to the left, two to the right. Marisek takes the snap, 
He's stepping up, muscles it down the right side of the field for Arnett, and it's intercepted by Mount St. Joseph. Coming up with the interception for Mount St. Joseph, cornerback Deshaun Starks, the 5'11", 160-pound grad student, gives Mount St. Joseph another opportunity, quite frankly, to put points on the board before we go into halftime. Yeah, I mean, kind of figured if they weren't going to just run the clock out, they were going to have to get it down there quickly. And I guess you'd rather have an interception of 50 yards-ish or 40 yards than uh, maybe one of 10 yards. And they've only got 29 seconds left. So in the end, it's not hopefully going to matter too much, but um, still a chance. And uh, now we'll see how the Jacket defense responds after being put back on the field just a play later. The ball is spotted at the Mount St. Joseph 44-yard line. The Lions have a two-receiver look with a wing on either side of the offensive line. You wonder if the test the outside having had so many jump balls completed today. I mean, with the size advantage that they have, you would think that they might give it a try, but inside handoff goes to Beecham. He plows ahead for a gain of two out to the Mount St. Joseph 46 yard line. And well, no indication for a timeout yet they're just content to let it run. Yep. Mount St. Joseph starts to head to their respective locker room here at Trestle Field inside the George Finney Stadium. The Yellow Jackets will do the same. That brings the first half to a close. The Lions of Mount St. Joseph lead the Yellow Jackets of Baldwin Wallace University 1914 at the half of the 2023 season and home opener for the Yellow Jackets. We're going to turn things over to the sounds of the BW Marching Yellow Jacket Band, and we'll be back late in the halftime with some statistics as well as a preview of the second half of action here from Trestle Field in Berea.
Hello, everyone, and a welcome back to Trestle Field at the George Finney Stadium on the campus of Baldwin Wallace University. We're finishing up the halftime of the 2023 season and home opener for the Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets. And when we start the second half, the Yellow Jackets will receive the kickoff, and they will be looking to make some hay on the scoreboard as they are on the wrong end right now of a 19 to 14 score with the Mount St. Joseph Lions leading the ball when Wallace Yellow Jackets. Matt Florjancic alongside Logan Rogers for the call of today's game. And Logan, when you look at the first half, the Yellow Jackets did a lot of good things, but one of them, one of the bad things that they did was turn the ball over three times, two lost fumbles and an interception. Yeah, you. Uh, that's really just the, one of the only things they really need to clean up. I mean, not too many missed assignments. Really, the turnovers hurt them and put the defense in a bad position. But when the defense has had good field position, it has been tough for the Lions offense to get going. As we have said, they have virtually had no rushing attack um, from Taylor and Beecham. Um, so a great job by the defense when they can get good field position. So we'll see if limiting the turnovers can really help um, the, the, the Jackets in general. Yeah, to your point, the Yellow Jackets have forced Mount St. Joseph into just a two of seven performance in third down efficiency. That's good for 29%. Conversely, the Yellow Jacket offense is 6 of 9 on third down, 67%. And a good bit of that was on their last scoring drive, thanks to the fact that they have a 6-foot, 2-inch quarterback <laughs> named Joey Marisak that can duck a shoulder and plow ahead for a gain of a few yards when needed. Yeah, you mentioned the Jacket defense really good on first down. And we saw really towards the end of the half on that last drive, um, then get a lot of pressure around Taylor, not letting him get comfortable. And I think that was really the difference in them stopping him as opposed to the earlier in the drive when he was moving it down the field with relative ease. So I think getting pressure on Taylor is going to be one of the keys to the defensive success in the second half and how the Yellow Jackets are going to have to get back in this game because you cannot let the Lions get up by too much with their explosive offense and how much they can do. Well, the good thing for the Yellow Jackets is they get the football to start this second half. So they have the first opportunity to impact this game on the scoreboard. And if they are able to march it down and get it into the end zone, they will have a lead for the second time today. They led it 7-6 to six after Mount St. Joseph got on the board with an early touchdown. The extra point hit off the left upright and was no good. The Yellow Jackets on the ensuing possession go right down the field, get the touchdown on a one-yard pass from Joey Marisek to Elijah Arnett. And then their extra point was good. M Mount St. Joseph then scores back-to-back -back touchdowns to uh, take a 19-7 advantage. But the Yellow Jackets respond late in a second, a second quarter, I should say, with another touchdown. This a one-yard run from Joey Marisek to uh, get a little bit closer to the Lions and set themselves up for an opportunity for a second half come from behind victory. I mean, yeah, you got to feel pretty good about where you're at. I know you would like to be up at halftime, but you turn the ball over three times and allow a couple scores, and you look up and you're only down five coming into the second half where you get the ball. I'd say pretty good position and a really good opportunity for the Jacket offense to respond right out of the gates in the second half. I'm really excited to see what adjustments they make on both sides of the ball. Yeah, no doubt about it. They do need to adjust some things, and, and key to that adjustment, take care of the football. I mean, it's, it's a precious commodity to have possession of the ball, and you have to take care of it. Clean up those exchanges between the running back and the quarterbacks. And just I, the, the interception, you kind of give Marisek a break because it acted as a de facto punt with 30 seconds exactly. left in the second, half, or second quarter, I should say. He tried to test the Lions deep with Elijah Arnett, and if you're going to test the defense deep, it's either Arnett or Stokes that are going to do it, and maybe Conwell as well. He stretched out Ohio Northern last year uh, in a big way. But the opportunity is there for the Yellow Jackets here in this second half to get a season-opening victory. Remember last year they had a lead at Mount St. Joseph, and the Lions rallied in the second half to beat the Yellow Jackets. Now the flip side, the Yellow Jackets have to rally on their home field against an opponent that traveled all the way up from Cincinnati and has a halftime lead of 19 to 14. Parf Singh on to kick it away for the Lions. Stokes and Love back deep to return for the Yellow Jackets. And <laughs> Parf.
Marv sing after the yellow or after the loudspeakers were turned down with the music will re-step off his kickoff approach. One of the bigger kickers you will see at any level, really, at 6'4", 248. 6'4", oh. is a huge kicker. Usually you see smaller guys kick. Love lets it bounce at the 13, oh. and he is bottled up and dropped at the 11-yard line. I think he was hoping for a carom out of bounds, and that ball just dropped. He was hoping for a couple blocks is what he was hoping for there. That, too. That would have <laughs> helped. Not going to lie. That, that might have helped. But – Definitely <laughs> something to think about next week is the uh, kickoff return blocking scheme we have seen a couple times that go a little bit awry, so I think something to shore up for the remainder of the season. Yeah, special teams has been a little bit of, a, of an issue so far for the Yellow Jackets here uh, in their first half of the 2023 season opener. So it'll be first and 10 Yellow Jackets, ball on their own 11-yard line. Marisak with three receivers to the left. He fires it out quickly to Stokes. Stokes gains about five yards before he's pushed out of bounds. Yeah, nice safe play, short play that gets five yards to start. I like that call. Um, and now your playbook is pretty open, the second and six. And yeah, ball on the 15, so called a second and six. Two rec three receivers out right, one out left. Marisek takes the snap, hands off, and it's Lineberger pushing the ball. Close to the 20 yard line. Looks like Lindberger's going to be spotted at the 19. So third and a long two for the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, we'll see if they can reestablish that run. Neither team has really got a great running game going, so uh, we'll, we'll see how this goes trying to reestablish it here in the second half. Yellow Jackets bring in a tighter formation with a wing on the left side, one receiver left, one receiver right. Marisek in a pistol formation. Calls for the snap. Hands off. And it'll bring up a fourth down as Lindberger is stopped for no gain. Fourth and two. The Yellow Jackets will be forced to punt from deep in their own territory. Yeah, and they're trying to move with that inside zone, so get that line all going one way. Um, but really, really well done on the block shooting of the interior line. And then the linebackers very quick to fill there. Um, and not allow a gain of two, and now uh, the Yellow Jackets will punt. Dylan Coyman on the punt. It's a clean snap, puts a right foot into oh, it. Good, good carry, and fair catch called for and made by Beecham on the Lions side of the 50-yard line at the 47. So first and 10 Lions at their own 47-yard line. On a little bit of a short field here, the Yellow Jacket defense going to have to crank up the pressure a little bit. Yeah, that's the key word right there, pressure. Uh, get get um, Taylor off balance here, um, and I think I think that will really do wonders uh, for this defensive strategy going into the second half. Taylor with three receivers to the right side of the formation and one back in the backfield. It's a pistol formation. He quickly fires it out to the right to Beecham Jr., and he is stopped after a gain of maybe two out to the 49. He had a couple of blockers in front, but he had more yellow jackets than he had blockers surrounding him, and that's why IBW was able to wrap him up after just a two-yard gain. Yeah, really well done by the boundary players on that side, uh, not allowing for an outside move. Taylor back to Beecham on the screen. This time he has blockers and first down yardage to the Yellow Jacket 40-yard line. And, yeah, I'm sure Beecham not as involved in that first half and not as many yards as they would like him to have, so definitely uh, an intentional target um, to him twice out of the gate so far. Really the only impact he had was on kickoff returns. Mm -hmm. The Yellow Jackets bottled him up on the inside runs. Three-receiver look again. All to the right side. Taylor takes the snap, fires it down the field, and it's complete to uh, Gary Powell the third, a sophomore tight end. They faked the short screen to Ari Turner, and that left a post open for Powell. 
well set up there. Two plays on the screen, then he faked the screen and go up the seam. That's that's really well designed and really well thought out um, scripted coming out of the half. So Taylor takes the snap, fakes the handoff, looks over the middle, and it's complete for first down yardage and more. As scooting out of one tackle before he is taken down, that's Caden Pollard. And then, we, yeah, we've seen a theme with these quick throws, getting the ball out really fast, not allowing this BW defense to get a chance to affect the throws. And honestly, Worthy was all over him there and just a, just a really well-placed ball by Taylor on the inside slant to get it completed. The three-receiver look with a wing on the right side of the formation for the Lions. Handoff inside to Jackson Gifford and initially the Yellow Jackets had him bottled up at the line of scrimmage and then he had like a fourth effort not even a second effort to push the ball inside the 10. Yeah great individual running there um, they try to get uh, their their big tight end out there in front of him but not able to um, block anyone and then uh, absorbs the initial contact and keeps going. Well, second and goal from the seven for the Lions. Man set in motion, fake the handoff. Taylor throws it out wide right, and it's broken up by Marquis Vereen. Taylor is shaken up. He got pounded uh, by the blitz that came in there. But that, that's what they have to do. They have, they have to go after him and force those off-platform throws because, as we see, hasn't really completed one yet. Yeah, and he threw to the wide side of the yeah. field on that one, put a lot of air underneath it. That could have given, given the Yellow Jackets an opportunity for a takeaway there. He's fortunate it was just broken up. Taylor takes the snap, looking right, throws the fade, and it's incomplete, broken up by Vereen once again. Looked like Porter Jr. was the intended target. And that'll bring up fourth and goal for the Lions. I mean, it's worked twice already, that jump ball. And uh, this time, though, um, really well covered by Vereen. They also kind of had a safety roaming underneath it in case it was underthrown. So they're definitely going to have to devote resources, uh, as they did there, um, to stopping the jump ball. And now they force him into a field goal. So I think this is this is probably what you want on a short field, especially after the offense goes three and out. Farf Singh on to attempt a 24-yard field goal. Snap back, ball down, kick up, and it is good. Mount Union adds on to their advantage, or Mount St. Joseph, excuse me, adds on to their advantage. They now lead the Yellow Jackets 22 to 14 with 10.44 to go here in the third quarter. Best case scenario for the Yellow Jackets, I think, on that one, with the way that Mount St. Joseph was moving the ball, forcing them to a field goal, or holding them to a field goal, I should say, is uh, almost a moral victory and an opportunity to say, okay, take a step back. We're still only down one possession, being down eight points. Yeah, you nailed it. I mean, still a one-score game, um, despite a three and out to open, and then despite um, the Lions getting the ball near the 50-yard line. Um, we really haven't seen them start back in their own 30, 20-yard line maybe once or twice, but they've pretty much been up near, near midfield. Um, so I think uh, really great adjustments, especially towards the end of that drive by the Jacket defense, um, to just allow three points and now give your offense a chance to go tie the game up. Farf Singh will kick it away for the Lions. Love and Stokes will return for the Yellow Jackets. And they're actually switching sides. Love has been on the left side of the formation. Now Stokes is going left and Love will go right. Arfsing puts the right foot into it. Stokes catches it at the nine off the bounce, off the ricochet. Tries the run laterally, and he goes nowhere. The Yellow Jackets trying desperately to get back to the middle of the field between the hash marks on these kickoff returns, and this is the third time they will start inside their own 15. I mean, you really have to credit the kick coverage um, for the Lions so far. Um, they've been in their lanes. Each one of them coming down the field has a specific spot he's got to be at, and they've filled them beautifully so far. Have not allowed many yards at all, if any, on these kickoff returns so far. Second consecutive drive, the Yellow Jackets will start first and 10 at their own 11-yard line. 
Three receivers to the right side of the formation, two to the left. Officials timeout. Spot will be moved a little further to the left, closer to the left hash mark. And now we're back underway. Five receiver look for the Yellow Jackets deep in their own territory. Marisak looking left, throws it towards the sideline, and he misses a wide open Tim Conwell. He just made it too tall for the sophomore receiver. Yeah, and we saw the Jackets try to get the run game going um, the last drive. Weren't able to do that with a run that got stopped on the third down attempt. So now they come out in the empty set um, and try to get something going there. If you recall that last touchdown of the first half, they started the drive with a lot of empty set plays, and now they'll try to get the pass game going. Marisek takes a snap, looking right, gets it out to receiver on the right side of the formation, out to the 19-yard line. That's Connor Awad on the reception. I mean, you'll take eight yards if they're just going to give you eight yards on the sideline, just an easy completion, and uh, that's really all you need to keep the ball moving and keep on schedule here. And now the playbook really does open up at third and two or three, and they can do a lot more within the offense. Yeah, it gives you an opportunity to run for a first down. It's long two, call it three from the 18. Marisek on the pass. It's deflected sky high and intercepted by the Lions. Bringing it down, that safety, Austin Price, and that sets the Lions up first and 10 at the Yellow Jacket, 28. I mean, yeah, he's that, that goes to the, the issues on special teams on the kickoff returns. It sets you up on a long field, and then if you have a mistake like that, and you give the Lions a short field again. Yeah, I mean, uh, Really great recognition there um, by Morosik. Uh, he knows he's got man coverage. He knows he's got to get it out fast. He goes to his little um, inside dig route, and um, it just unfortunately gets tipped and batted up. But when you're in short field like this, it makes it really tough on the defense. Yeah, the Yellow Jacket defense has to dig in here. Taylor on the pass over the middle, and he misses Newton wide and high. I haven't seen many misses like that from Taylor on those inside throws when he's got time. So definitely fortunate there. The receiver did have inside position. And Newton, we haven't seen targeted a ton in this game other than he does have the long score for the touchdown. But other than that, not a ton of targets for him. And I think uh, the Jackets would do well to keep him bottled up. Yeah, that's a young man that you have to watch out for. You can't afford to let him get loose. Taylor hands off to Beecham Jr., runs right. Gets down to the 25, call it the 24-yard line. Gain of four, third and six for the Lions. Yeah, great job on that play by the interior D-line. Moving with the linemen as they go up to their blocks and not allowing any gaps uh, for Beecham to pick through as he has good vision. So two receivers in the formation, a wing on the right side, two backs in the backfield with Taylor. Taylor takes the snap, fakes the handoff, looks left the whole way, and it's broken up by the Yellow Jackets. Vereen again with the pass breakup, the freshman stepping up in a big way. I mean, insanely strong start for Vereen to the second half. Had that end zone fade that he broke up, and now he comes across on this just getting a fingertip on it, and that's how you want to play it. Don't get there too early, and then arrives and gets his hand around right there. That's textbook coverage, um, and now they'll put Porter out there on him as we have a little bit of a stoppage here. Yeah, fourth down and six for Mount St. Joseph. 9-11 to go here in the third quarter. The Lions with a 22-14 lead over the Jackets and knocking on the door, but potentially going up by two scores. Taylor takes a hand, or takes a snap, fakes a handoff, throws it out to Beecham. Ooh. He is absolutely clobbered, and all oh, the Yellow Jackets were off the field, and they're gonna get flagged. Oh, man. Zach Soul absolutely crushed Beecham, broke up the pass, and gets called for a foul. 
I mean, to me, it did not look like anything helmet to helmet, helmet to neck occurred there. Just a good, clean hit. He saw him the whole way. He, that's his responsibility. He saw the assignment. He comes up and makes a massive hit. And they're going to flag him. I think sometimes these flags just get thrown because it looks horrible. But I really didn't think there was anything wrong there. I, it didn't look like he was, it was a late hit either. He was right on time, right on time with the ball. So we'll see what the officials conference uh, ends up leading to. But Beecham absolutely clobbered. He went one way, his helmet went the other, the ball went a third, and then the flag came in. Yeah, well, you hope Beecham's okay for absolutely. sure. The fact um, that he's able to get up and yeah. walk off the field under his own power, my hat's off to the young man because he absolutely got smoked. Second time we've seen his helmet come off today as well. Um, First time was a face mask. Yeah, uh, the second true, time true. was just he absolutely got hammered by the Yellow yeah. Jackets. I mean, Sewell, ab Sewell absolutely crushed him. not number 11 that's disqualified it's number 21 that's disqualified Zach Soul for targeting that was a good three to four minute conference by the officials to make that call and that gives the Lions the ball back on what would have been a turnover on downs and it gives them half distance to the goal they'll have a first and ten at the Yellow Jacket 12 yard line and there is a whole lot of chirping from the Yellow Jackets. They have to watch now. They don't want to yeah. compound the issue. Yeah, we saw Coach Hilbert all over the sideline official on this side. Obviously, the sideline not happy about it for the Jackets. Um, but it, the, the call was made, and now now they got to move on and, and continue to do what they've been doing. And they've been putting a really nice stop to this this offense. But that it's tough. Um, and you hope that gives the defense some juice yeah. um, to play for the – uh, Zul, obviously, who just got ejected. The official getting upset is one thing, or the head coach getting upset. It's the players that are talking on the field. You really yeah. have to be careful with that. You don't want to give the officials any more reason to pull out that yellow laundry. And I tell you what, credit to the Yellow Jackets for rallying around Zach Soul right now. Yeah. All the offense is going up to him one by one and, and saying, hey, we got you. We'll, we'll figure this out. Don't worry about it. It was a good, from our perspective, it was a good, clean hit. And unfortunately, the the visuals of the hit. Yeah. So Zach Soul sees his day come to an early end with the disqualification on the targeting foul. That'll set up first and 10 at the Yellow Jacket 12-yard line. Taylor takes a snap, looks left the whole way, throws it over the middle, and it's incomplete. It was going toward Cam York, and in coverage, Brandon Seabright. It's a shame that the Yellow Jackets don't have a second defender in the area of these passes because the last couple from Taylor have given them opportunities if they have a, another defender there, one on the man and one playing the ball, whew, they could get a takeaway. Taylor takes a snap, hand off to McKenzie. He's cut down in the backfield. Coming up from his linebacker spot, Connor Miller. Yeah, and Miller with the pressure on, uh, on the last play as well um, to force that off-platform throw. But when you do pressure and make him – have those off platform throws you do have to commit more resources and that's why there's not going to be that second defender they're kind of leaving one-on-ones um, when they do rush him like that so you're uh, you're taking the chance um, that he's going to not throw it complete and uh, so far it's working out for him um, but yeah back to back great plays uh, for Miller there and now a third and very long loss of six on the play it'll be third and 16 for the Lions. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Taylor looks left, now looks middle, and it's caught in the end zone for a touchdown. 
Austin Brock on the reception. I mean, that's just an absolute killer there. Um, over 20 yard pass play. That's a heck of a throw. <laughs> yeah. I mean, two double defenders coverage. in the area. Uh. So the Yellow Jackets with a little bit of work to do here. 8 11 to go in the third quarter, and the Lions lead them 28 to 14 with the extra point pending. And Farf's thing on to attempt it. Snap back, ball down, kick up, and the kick is good. So Mount St. Joseph with a 15-point lead over Baldwin Wallace as the Lions have a 29-14 to advantage on the scoreboard. While well, we have this break in the action, I want to remind you that today's Yellow Jacket football game is being brought to you by BSN Sports and Nike the official apparel and uniform provider for Yellow Jacket Athletics, University Hospitals, the medical provider for BW Athletics and its student athletes, and Dan Andrews and Olympic Forest Products, a global recycling company. Today's game is also being brought to you by the Oswald Company Risk and Insurance Leaders since 1893, Chuck Rattuno and OE Connection LLC, your global automotive technology provider, Medical Mutual of Ohio, the official health care provider of Baldwin Wallace University, Barron's Bus Lines, the official charter bus company of Yellow Jacket Athletics, Mike's Bar and Grill in downtown Berea, the home of the Monday Night Athletics Roadshow, and Antonio's Pizzeria of Middleburg Heights, the official pizza sponsor of Yellow Jacket Athletics. You are enjoying today's game between the Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets and Mount St. Joseph Lions on BWYellowJackets.com and OAC TV. Farf sing on to kick it off for the Lions. Love and Stokes on the return for the Yellow Jackets. And let's see, maybe the special teams can get a good return here and start to ignite this Yellow Jacket team. I mean, at this point, you are looking for any spark you can get. So if you can get one on this kickoff return here, it would be huge. Farf Singh puts a good right foot into it and Ooh. sails into it out of the back of the end zone. And that'll give the Yellow Jackets a touchback and bring it out to the 20. I mean, even a touchback, it's the best field position <laughs> that the Jackets have had in a while. Yeah, um, check that. They move it out to the 25, yeah. but agreed. Uh, I was thinking the same thing, but I didn't know how to say it delicately. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is a good opportunity for the Yellow Jackets now to try and get something rolling. But down by two scores, I mean, they really don't have to force anything. There's plenty of time left in the game, 23 minutes of actual game time. Victor Ford Jr. on the carry. Gets across the 30, plows ahead towards the 35. Call it the 33-yard line. Gain of eight on the play. Yellow Jackets going no huddle. Arnett in love in the slot with a receiver out to wide left. Hand off to Victor Ford Jr. He's across 35, pushes toward the 40, and gets first down yardage for the Yellow Jackets out to the 39-yard line. And that's what you want to see. you got to get the running game established so you can go to some of those better pass plays you have in your arsenal as opposed to just having to go empty. And uh, I think that's what they're really going to try to do on this drive, and I really hope that they can get that run game established because it will open up a lot of doors for the offense. Awad out wide left. Love in the slot on the left side. A wing on the left side of the formation. Arnett one-on-one -on, -one on the right. And a flag on the play. And after gains of 14 yards total on two carries, the Yellow Jackets marching backwards five yards after the false start. So far in the second half, we have just not seen the offense kind of get out of their own way. And I think if they can just kind of stay on schedule here and keep that, keep trying to run and keep getting that, that defensive line worn down, I really do think that uh, the offense will be really well served. Marisak sends a man in motion. It's Awad. He'll fake the handoff to Victor Ford Jr. Boot out to his right. Lay it down the field for Awad. Oh. He makes the catch at the 35. Hustles to the 20, 15, 10. Cut down inside the 10. Big time play for the Yellow Jackets. I mean, what a throw by Morosik. Rolling to his right on one foot. Plops it right in over the defender's outstretched arms. 58 you know what, able to yards 58. on the reception. 
First and goal, Jackets. Marisak hands off to Victor Ford Jr. He's at the five, lowers the shoulder, fumbles the ball going in. Is he down or is he across the goal line or did he fumble the ball? Looks like they're marking him down. Looks like they're marking him down inside the one. So second and goal now for the Yellow Jackets. Marisek takes the snap, tries to lower the shoulder, gets a boost from Victor Ford Jr. and gets into the end zone for the Yellow Jacket touchdown. I mean, you talk about a spark. I mean, 58-yard pass completion, get right up to the line, run it to the goal line, and then punch it in with a sneak. Um, that's Marisek's second rushing touchdown of the day, and uh, he, was, he was brilliant on that drive as well. And we're, the Yellow Jackets are going to go for two. They were down by 15 before the score. Now a chance to make it down by seven if they convert the two-point conversion. A lot of confusion on the field right now. And the official has not signaled to reset the play clock. Now he will. Okay, there we go. Looks like three receivers on the field. Awad, Love, and Arnett all to the right side of the formation. Awad and Love in the slot. Marisek under center. Sends a man in motion. Throws it to Arnett. Arnett catches it at the four, trying to push forward, and he goes nowhere. The screen play snuffed out by the Lions, and the deficit remains nine for the Yellow Jackets as they trail the Lions 29-20 to with 6.35 to go here in the third quarter. Despite not getting the extra point or the two-point conversion, still an impressive response for the Yellow Jackets. Big play by Connor Awad, 58 yards on the reception at a time where you desperately needed a big play. Uh, yeah, they just had gotten backed up by the penalty, and so uh, Morosik and Awad just taking matters into their own hands, getting it down in the 10-yard line. And then um, last year, the Jackets almost 90% getting points when they get inside the red zone. They just haven't had the opportunity to do that a ton so far in this game. And so when they get in there, they're very good, and they got in there and scored at this time. And so now a uh, great response, and we'll see now down only nine with a bunch of time left, over 18 minutes of game time. 21 minutes 21 of game minutes, time, excuse yeah. me, yeah. Um, and I, I really, really good response there from the Jackets. Impressive, impressive stuff, especially after Zul gets ejected on that um, preceding defensive possession um, to kind of band together and respond like that. Very impressive right back in this game. Now let's see if they can back the Lions up a little bit and make them play with their backs to the shadow of their own goal line. Evans on the kick for the Yellow Jackets. Turner and Price back, or Holt rather, back to return for the Lions. Evans charges, puts the right foot into it, sends it into a moderate breeze. It's fielded at the 10 by Turner, and he will get the ball up to the 30, maybe out to the 31 yard line. Solid return, call it the 32 where the Lions will be first and 10. Definitely one of the longer fields that Mount St. Joseph has been on uh, today, especially in this second half. Now it's time for the uh, Yellow Jacket defense to go to work and try to get off the field. Yeah, and it's, it's going to be really important on this early down, these first and second downs here, for them to get some stops, and then they can be able to do whatever they want coverage-wise, which has been pretty solid um, since that first quarter. Taylor takes a snap, hands off, and it's a modest gain out to the 35-yard line. That was Gifford on the carry. It's a gain of three. It'll bring up second and seven. Four down linemen for the Yellow Jackets. And again, Gifford fumbles the ball and somehow cool. gets a fortunate bounce to have it come right back to him, and he gets first down yardage out to the 48-yard line. Yeah, fortunate. Bit of an understatement there. Uh, looked like uh, number six, Alden Steele, 
had an opportunity to maybe just tip it away and, and uh, allow another player to recover it. But, yeah, fortunate, fortunate, definitely the operative word there. First and ten Lions at their own 48-yard line. Taylor with a three-receiver look, fakes the handoff, looks right, completes it, and his receiver doesn't get many yards after the reception. On the reception, that was Zane Dine. Gets the ball to the Yellow Jacket, 44, second and two. Taylor hands off to McKenzie. He's got first down yardage and more as he's inside the 40 down to the 36-yard line. And we've seen the Lions kind of go a little bit faster with their tempo, trying to catch the uh, BW defense off guard so far. So we'll see how they kind of adjust in lining up. And off to McKenzie. He's got a wide opening inside the 20 to the 15, inside the 15. First down yardage for the Lions. Yeah, and they get their, their big tight end, but really more of a fullback, Gary Powell, um, at 6'3", 260, out to lead block on the end and kick out. And, uh, That's a very nice <laughs> lead blocker. First and 10 from the 14. Taylor looking to pass, looks right, throws it, and it's caught. And they're going to give him a catch. They're going to say that he got a foot down in bounds. That was Dine on the reception. Yeah, another high throw, just allowing his tall receiver to get up there and make the catch. And now um, the Jackets really got to get the players off the field and get ready to go. Yeah, Taylor takes the snap, hands off to McKenzie, and he pushes toward the goal line. And he has first down yardage to the one. First and goal, Lions. And as you said, they're going with a hurry up look. Taylor hands off to McKenzie. He's bottled up in the backfield and taken down. And that's Connor Miller once again shooting in and uh, bringing down the ball carrier. And you can see uh, just a pile of bodies in the interior that kind of force that cutback. And sometimes it's a defensive tackle. That's really what you have to do um, is just take people down and don't allow the running back to have any footing in the inside so he can't run there. And that's what we see there. Bounces them outside. And then the rest of your free hitters are able to come up and make the tackle. So um, that's a really textbook job of the interior and then also the free players on the outside. Loss of two on the play, second and goal from the three. Taylor with a three receiver look. Sends Beecham in motion left to right. Fakes the handoff, looking right. It's batted away by the Yellow Jackets as coming in to swat it down was Jonathan Dixon from his linebacker spot. Really impressive stand here that uh, the Jacket defense has going. And uh, one more play, then they got to think about kicking a field goal. So you really, really want to get this stop here. Third and goal from the three. I'll be interested to see if they go back to that back shoulder fade that they really have liked so far in this game. But I mean, why wouldn't you at this point? Yeah, you've had a lot of success with the timeout on the field. And it is charged to Mount St. Joseph. Tells you what kind of a big play this is, especially to, to yeah. take a timeout to make sure they get it right. Yeah, no doubt about it. While we have this break in the action, I want to remind you that today's Yellow Jacket football game against Mount St. Joseph is being brought to you by BSN Sports and Nike, the official apparel and uniform provider for Yellow Jacket Athletics, University Hospitals, the proud medical provider for BW Athletics and its student athletes, and Dan Andrews and Olympic Forest Products, a global recycling company. Today's game is also being brought to you by the Oswald Company, risk and insurance leaders since 1893, Chuck Rattuno and OE Connection LLC, your global automotive technology provider, Medical Mutual of Ohio, the official health care provider of Baldwin-Wallace University. Barron's Bus Lines, the official charter bus company of Yellow Jacket Athletics. Mike's Bar and Grill in downtown Berea, the home of the Monday Night Athletics Roadshow. And Antonio's Pizzeria of Middleburg Heights, the official pizza sponsor of Yellow Jacket Athletics. You're enjoying today's 2023 season and home opener for the Baldwin-Wallace Yellow Jackets against the Mount St. Joseph Lions on BWYellowJackets.com and OAC TV. Third and goal for the Lions. Ball at the Yellow Jacket three-yard line. Taylor with two receivers to the right, two to the left. Man in motion goes right to left. Now Taylor looking right, looking right. Flushed out of the pocket. 
and survives one attempt. Now he's gonna boot left, looking to lob it deep left in the corner of the end zone, and it's caught for the touchdown. No, Omar Porter out of bounds. Jr. Staying out of bounds. It's waved off by the line judge. Wow, I don't know about this one. It'll be interesting. No, they're gonna they're gonna maintain that call and call it fourth down. It looked like he had his feet down. Maybe he was juggling the ball, going out of bounds. But I tell you what, credit the Yellow Jackets for sticking with with Taylor for most of the play. But they over <laughs> they had so many linemen going after and linebackers going after Taylor that somehow Porter Jr. was way <laughs> was way wide open. Yeah, I mean that, that that tends to happen when the quarterback's able to extend a play like that. Credit the Yellow Jacket pressure, but then impeccable job of escaping the pocket by Taylor and uh, finds Porter wide open, but he's not able to get a, either foot down in bounds. Farsing's 20-yard field goal attempt is up, and it's good. That pushes the Lions' lead out to 12. They now lead it 32-20 to 20 over the Yellow Jackets with 3.04 to go here in the third quarter, so plenty of time for the Yellow Jackets to get back into this one. I mean, considering the results of that uh, that third down play, I mean, uh, I, I consider that a very big win for the defense. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a that's a victory right there for sure. if you're the Yellow Jackets after the last drive where you started running the ball effectively do you go back to that do you continue to try and run the ball to start this drive or do you let Marisek kind of test his arm a little bit and air it out I think you have to continue to involve the run game because as we saw on uh, the 58 yard pass play that came off of a play action rollout and you had been running the ball well enough for the play action to be a threat and keep the defense off balance. So I think you have to keep the run game involved in order to be able to take those shots down the field, which they'll need to do to come back down 12. So I, yes, I do think that you test the run game a little bit more in this drop. Barf sings kick, sails toward the sideline, and it's out of bounds. Oh, Illegal procedure. So <laughs> after several tries at it for the Yellow Jackets, they finally get one to bounce out of bounds in their favor, and that'll give the Yellow Jackets a little bit of breathing room here to start this next drive. And then I see the field judge on this side also has a flag out way past the play. I'm wondering, is that related? That, as it stands right now, the ball is at the Yellow Jacket 35-yard line. If, if this goes against the Yellow Jackets, this is just not their day <laughs> for, for miscues. The Yellow Jackets go from having a first and 10 at their own 35 to backing up 15 yards for an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. And they will now start first and 10 at their own 20. Yeah, field position for the Yellow Jackets at a premium today. Um, just not, for one reason or another, never able it's, to get really past the 20. It's not been there pretty much the entire time. So now Marisek has a little bit more ground to cover before leading the Yellow Jacket to lead the Yellow Jackets to the end zone. First and ten at the twenty. He's looking right, throwing deep down the field and miscommunication between him and Lameo. Lameo ran a deep out and that ball went on an out and up. And fortunately, the DB for Mount St. Joseph wasn't able to break off of coverage in time to track that ball down. And uh, we saw both DBs kind of stay with uh, LeMayo there. Um, Arnett wide open on an a little out route underneath. So uh, maybe just go th through the progression and find him. But um, I certainly do understand wanting to test the waters and get, that, get those points back for sure. Yeah, absolutely. No harm in trying it. Bunch receivers three to the left side of the formation. It's to Stokes on the screen. Stokes gets out to the 23 yard line maybe call it a gain of three that'll bring up third and seven for the Yellow Jackets. 
Yeah, when you don't get anything on first down, really crucial to make sure you get at least something on second down to make it a little bit more manageable. Um, and we've seen them have decent success in third and long situations so far, and we'll see what they've got up here. Five receiver look for the Yellow Jackets. Two to the left, three to the right. That's LeMayo, Love, and Arnett on the right. Stokes and Conwell on the left. Conwell's in the slot on the left side. LeMayo in the slot on the right. Marisek takes the snap, looking left, flushed out of the pocket, gets across the 25, dives for the 30. He needs the 30 to get the first down. And it looks like he'll have enough based off of the one official's spot. And now they're going to call it fourth and short from their own 29-yard line. Nope. First down, okay. First and 10, Yellow Jackets from the 30. And we saw the Lions bring pressure that time. Great pickup by that O-line, allowing Morosic to get, um, get into the open field and pick up a first down, lowering his shoulder. Five receiver look again for the Yellow Jackets. Marisek awaits the snap. Looks to his right, turns back left. Now he's gonna swing it out of bounds. He threw it in the area of Darius Stokes, and I don't think it was intended for anybody except for maybe the person sitting on the bench at Mount, <laughs> on Mount St. Joe's sideline because Marisek was facing a ton of heat from the Lions' defense. A ton of heat, and then they do drop into that quarters coverage uh, in the back end, and uh, they picked up uh, all the receivers really well, so really not a ton of places to go and just throws it out of bounds, avoiding mistakes. And that, the little things, like avoiding those mistakes, are going to be what gets the Jackets back into the game. Second and 10 from the Yellow Jacket 30. Handoff inside, and it'll be a modest gain from Lindberger out to the 33. So we'll bring up third and seven. Five receiver look for the Yellow Jackets. Marisek takes the snap, looks to his left, pump fakes. Now throws it deep down the field to Stokes. Stokes makes oh. the catch at the 40 in a tight coverage. It's a first down for the Yellow Jackets. I mean, what a catch there. We've seen some really good contested catches on the Lions side, but that was one of the best of the day for the Jackets. Um, Marisek knows he's got one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. The receivers, uh, the DB's eyes are on the receiver, and now they go quick up to the line. First and 10 at the Mount St. Joseph 39 and a flag on the play. It was a completed pass to Arnett, but a false start is signaled by the line judge. Marisek not happy with the call. He's talking to the officials. Yeah, they get him on a false start here. Uh, but great play recognition on that third down by uh, Marisek. Um, throwing a strike and allowing your receiver to go up and make the play. We talked about it in the beginning great playmakers on this BW offense and uh, they've all pretty much shown up today um, which is amazing for the Jackets yeah and it's exactly what BW needed so first and 15 from the Mount St. Joseph 44 Marisek sends a man in motion now kicks it to Lindberger Lindberger gets a block at the 40 down to the 35 inside the 30 to the 20 to the 15 it's a first down for the Yellow Jackets as he's run out of bounds inside the red zone. And what, what a great call there. Taking advantage of that Lions defensive line, being really aggressive as they have been all day, and uh, they get the screen in for about 20, 25 yards, and here they go again. Marisek from the 15, faces first to 10, throws it out to Stokes on the left side on a short out, and it was just a little bit too wide for Darius Stokes at full extension, couldn't get a hand on it. And now we've seen both offenses really go up tempo, uh, trying to keep the opposing defense off balance. And um, it's really worked well for the Jackets here on this drive. And we'll see if they can punch it in. As I said, uh, about 90% in the red zone getting points last year. So uh, we'll see what they can do with this drive. Five seconds left to go here in the third quarter of play. Marisek takes the snap with five receivers on the field. Throws over the middle. It's complete to Love. He gets the reception down to the five-yard line. Call it the six. That'll bring up a third and short 
on the first play of the fourth quarter as we get ready to switch ends. The Yellow Jackets knocking on the door of cutting into a 12-point deficit. They trail the Lions of Mount St. Joseph 32-20 to at the end of the third quarter. We're going to step aside for a break. When we come back, we'll have fourth quarter action here from Trestle Field at the George Finney Stadium on the campus of Baldwin Wallace University. Begin the fourth quarter of play here from Trestle Field with the Yellow Jackets facing a third and one from the six. Hand off to Lindberger. He's inside the five, down to the four. First down yardage for the Yellow Jackets. It'll be first and goal. Matt Florjancic alongside Logan Rogers for the call of today's game. The Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets trail the uh, Mount St. Joseph Lions 32 to 20 early in this fourth quarter. Marisek takes the snap, hands off to Lindberger, plows his way forward down to the two. They'll bring up second and goal for the Yellow Jackets. Lindberger with a blocker in front. That's Rocco Del Verme. Marisek under center, takes the snap, fakes the handoff, rolls to his right, flares it to the back of the end zone. It's a touchdown for the Yellow Jackets. Jonah Schrock on the reception for the Yellow Jackets score. I mean, what a job there. What a response drive by the BW offense, and then really great decision-making throughout from Marosik. Um, his first option... Um, on that play wasn't there looks to the second one the corner route it's not there and then he finally keeps himself composed and finds in the back of the end zone is receiver for a touchdown so uh, brilliant the, response <laughs> you know just when you think you get momentum going in the right direction something funky happens on a special teams play and on that particular exchange it was Evans extra point attempt going off the upright and falling no good. So the deficit remains six now for the Yellow Jackets. They trail the Lions of Mount St. Joseph 32 to 26 with 14-17 to go here in this fourth quarter. And the Yellow Jackets desperately need a defensive stop. They cannot afford to give up points on this drive. Yes, they do. Um. And we've seen them. We've seen them be very stout um, when they've had the opportunity of uh, good field position. And then obviously, um, with Sewell getting ejected earlier, and then the touchdown on that previous drive, um, they've had a lot of adversity that they've had to fight through the day. And they're still in this game. And uh, we really, really will be interested to see how they respond and go about uh, making Taylor and that offense uncomfortable on this next drive. Yeah, and the Sewell, uh, the Sewell ejection could have ramifications in following weeks is with him getting sent back in in this game. I believe it was early in the second half that that happened, which means he has to sit out the first half next week as well. So Evans on to kick it away for the Yellow Jackets. And it's a line driver towards the sideline. Bounces over Beecham's head inside the 10. He scoops it up at the 8. 
trying to cut across the field. Gets to the 20, trying to turn the corner. He will out to the 29-yard line. Good return right there after a botched play. Yeah, good job by Beecham making uh, something out of nothing. As you said earlier, he's really made the most impact on his kick returns and punt returns so far today. Um, so we'll hope that the, the, the BW defense can keep him contained on this next drive here. The first and 10 Lions ball at their own 29-yard line. An officials conference is taking place at the 43. Nobody wins when this happens. So we'll, we'll see what the result of this conference is. Yellow Jackets called for encroachment on the kickoff, and instead of re-kicking it, Mount St. Joseph will just get five free yards added to the end of the return, so it'll be first and 10 from the Mount St. Joseph 34-yard line instead of the 29. Yeah, I mean, special teams has been a tough battle uh, for the Jackets all day long. There's been kickoff penalties. There's been missed assignments. There's been missed field goals, so uh, definitely something to look to shore up in the coming weeks and for the remainder of this game. So Taylor breaks the huddle with two receivers to the left, one to the right, a wing on the right side. Now sends a man in motion, handoff inside to Gifford, and he plows ahead after looking like he was going to be stopped after a two-yard gain. He's like, eh, you know what? I'll take it for 11 more and gain 13 and get a first down out to the 47. Yeah, really strong run there by Gifford. Taylor takes the snap, look to his right, completes it to Cam York, and he is marked down on his side of the 49-yard line, or on his side of the 50, I should say. And Vereen again on the stop. He's had a very, very good second half especially, but a very good game overall. And um, good pressure dialed up that time on Taylor by the defense as well, forcing him to get the ball out quick. Second and seven from midfield. Taylor takes a snap, fakes the handoff, looks to his right, and off the hands of York, out of bounds, incomplete. That'll bring up third and long. The Yellow Jackets have been good in these situations thus far today. They are holding Mount St. Joseph to 27% efficiency on third down, three of 11. Let's try to make it three of 12 here and get the offense the ball back. Third and seven from midfield. 13, 12 to go here in the fourth quarter. Taylor looks to his right, completes a pass to Joey Newton, but he's short of the First down marker, he needed the 43, he got stopped at the 46. And it looks like they'll send out the punt unit. Fourth and three from the Yellow Jacket 46, clear on the punt. Be a heck of a play, a heck of a time for a fake. The snap goes back to Claire. He puts a right foot into it. It's a driving punt. Alden Steele fields it at the four. Gets out of one tackle. Gets out of another. Gets to the 10. Out to the 15. Pushes toward the 20 before he is taken down. Great return there. Caught it about the three or four and uh, able to get up to nearly the 20. So, yeah. Uh, the, it looked like it could go sideways, but... Alden Steele did some good work to move that ball out to the 16-yard line. Call it to actually the 18-yard line according to the spot. 12-15 yeah. to go for the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, now after a desperately needed stop, uh, great job by the defense. Now we'll see how the offense responds, um, given the opportunity to tie or even lead this game now with this drive. Marisek with three receivers to the right, one to the left. That's Stokes in one-on-one -on -one coverage. 
Marisek looks down the field to Stokes. It's batted at the line of scrimmage, flag thrown. It's intercepted and returned for a touchdown by Deshaun Starks, but there's no celebrating going on. And that on one's Mount coming St. Joseph back. yet. Hopefully it's pass interference. We shall see. A close field judge did signal interference against the Lions. And now uh, one of these one of these conversations again. These always make me <laughs> nervous. As a the fan in me cannot, uh, you know, not be nervous about these types of things. Yeah, they send a delayed blitz that time, and then the the second blitzer who comes in the, uh, in the hole able to get his hands on the pass, and uh, tip it up for the interception. Starks whistled for a holding penalty before the pass. It's a first down for the Yellow Jackets on the penalty. And that moves the ball out to the Yellow Jacket 28-yard line. Gives them a little bit of breathing room now. Marisek with a four-receiver look. Three to the right, one to the left. He hands off to Lindberger, and he is crushed in the backfield. Maybe falls forward for a gain of a half a yard. Declan Brophy in on the stop. We haven't called his name a lot, but what we have, it's been it's been memorable for all the wrong reasons if you're a Yellow Jacket fan. <laughs> Five receivers now on the field. Stokes and LeMayo out left for the Yellow Jackets. Marisek looks to his right. Looking right, now rolling left, steps out of a tackle, muscles it down the field for LeMayo. He catches it at the 43, pushes across the 40, down to the 38-yard line in the Mount St. Joseph territory. It's a yellow jacket first down. Yeah, and they're manned up across the board there. So Morosek's got to buy some time. He's done that so well today. And then receiver finally able to get open and break away, get some separation, make a good catch. And then LeMayo dragging him for another five or six yards. And here we go with the tempo again. Five receivers for the Jackets. Marisek takes a snap, looks to his left, throws it left. It's complete to Conwell. He gets the ball out at the 35-yard line. It'll be a gain of three, bring up second and seven for the Yellow Jackets. And you can feel with that deep completion, the momentum starting to slowly, slowly shift to the Jacket side as they build this offensive attack here on this drive early in the fourth quarter. 10.48 to go here in the fourth quarter. Jackets down by six, 32-26. Ball at the Mount St. Joseph 35-yard line, second and seven. Hand off to Lindberger. He pushes through the line of scrimmage, down past the 30, inside the 27-yard line now. And that's enough for a Yellow Jacket first down. They needed seven. Lindberger got eight. And one of the longest runs we've seen so far today. And uh, that's a really good sign that this offense is really starting to hum. Marisek takes a snap. He's looking left. Now looks right. Throws to a wide open receiver. It's Awad inside the 10. First and goal for the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, and Pierce, their safety there, kind of just loses him. He's got that quarter of the field, and he kind of takes his eyes off the uh, AWOD there. Um, and then they just run a little comeback in right behind it, and he's able to get a wide-open completion. And now first and goal from the four as the Yellow Jackets look to take the lead. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. That Stokes now sent in motion right to left. Marisek fires it to Stokes. He catches it in the backfield and is spun down for lost yardage. It looks like they're gonna lose two and a half, call it three, back to the seven. Good job by the Lions to sniff out that screen pass. Stokes will stay on the left side of the formation. LeMayo in the slot on the right with Conwell and Awad out wide right. Lindberger in the backfield with Marisek flanking his left side. LeMayo sent in motion now, goes back right, low snap, Marisek takes it, fires it over the middle to Conwell, and it's too tall for the wide out. Conwell listed at 5'9", he probably needed to be about 6'3 <laughs> to catch that one. 
Third and goal now for the Yellow Jackets. Two receivers left, two to the right. Marisek takes a snap, rolls to his right. He muscles it into the back corner of the end zone and he overshoots Lameo. I didn't really, I don't really fault Marisek on that one. I don't know that there was many options for him. If he throws it on a line, it's probably batted away. Fourth down and goal for the Yellow Jackets. And they will call on Evans to attempt a 24 yard field goal. Snap is back, the ball is down, the kick is up, and the kick is no good. Pulled to the left. And Mount St. Joseph holds. And their lead stays at six. The Lions lead the Jackets 32 to 26 with 9.02 to go here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and you really, really would have liked to get points on that drive. Even, even the three would have been really helpful. Um, but now this forces your defense to make another stand, and we're really gonna, we're really getting to see what they're made of here today, um, with how much adversity has gone on in this game that they've had to respond to, and they're gonna have to do it again um, if they want to win the game to get the ball back to the offense. I know the scoreboard says they've given up 32 points, but it doesn't tell the whole story. This defense has had to work yeah. all day on short fields. And the fact that it's only been 32 is is somewhat uh, impressive for this defense. But they're not done yet. They still have some work to do and an opportunity to get off the field here. Three receiver look. Taylor to pass. He's looking right the whole way. It's too tall for a wide receiver, Caden Pollard. Incomplete second and ten. Yeah, we've seen these, these these DBs especially for the Jackets have had to work especially hard to stay on top of these receivers. A lot of size out there for the Lions at receiver as well. I mean, you're throwing out a lot of 5'9", five, 5'10", five, corners. They're going up against 6'3", 6'4", 6'3", 6'4". I mean, across the line, it's pretty impressive. Taylor handles the off-the-mark snap, swings it out to Porter Jr. Credit Vereen for a tackle for no yards after the catch. That'll bring up a third and roughly six yards from the 24. And you'll take that all day. A beautiful tackle, no additional gain for a minimal yardage. Taylor throws it left side to Porter Jr. He catches it wide open and nobody seems to be trying to tackle him as he crosses the 40, then the 50, and now pushes it close to the Yellow Jacket 40 yard line. Yeah, and that's what they've been trying to get with that tempo. Um, the Baldwin Wallace defense doesn't get lined up in time and then you've got a missed assignment and next thing you know, it's 60 yards downfield. So definitely got to get a quicker rotation in. Taylor takes the snap, fakes the handoff, looking to his left, rolls out left, throws it for the end zone. And Worthy's there to break it up. Okay, good. No flags. <laughs> Will be second and 10 from the Yellow Jacket 42-yard line. Yeah, Worthy, we, he's had the two touchdowns over him, but I think he's had a really good day in coverage. He's been blanketing these receivers and another great job of getting his head around just at the last second, knocking that ball away and making it second and long. You said second and long, it's second and 10 from the Yellow Jacket 42 yard line. Handoff inside to Gifford. He lowers his shoulder and gets nine down to the 40, well, call it eight to the 34 yard line. It'll be third and two. Taylor takes a snap, hands off to Gifford again, and first down yardage for the Lions to the Yellow Jacket 32-yard line. And now as they kind of get closer to the to the end zone here, it's really crucial that you stop them at about this yardage because a few, even a field goal makes this a two-score game now, and you're really looking to keep it close. 
Yeah, any points now for Mount St. Joseph makes the hill a little bit tougher to climb for the Yellow Jackets. Taylor looks to the right, throws it deep down the field, and it's caught for a Mount St. Joseph touchdown. Caden Pollard catches the touchdown. I mean, there was quite a bit of hand fighting going on. I'll I guess say. the field judge said there was enough that on both sides that the play is going to stand. Yeah, I mean, just a ton of hand fighting out there on the outside, and um, one way or another, receiver able to get position and haul it in. I mean, that's that's just a tough play um, for the defense to take, and and, and another thing uh, that the the Jackets will have to respond to. Barf Singh's extra point is up, and it is good. That pushes the Lions' lead out to 13. They lead it 39 to 26 with 7.22 to go in this one. And the Yellow Jackets have some soul searching to do if they're gonna try and get back and win this game here in the 2023 season opener. have this break in the action want to remind you that today's yellow jacket regular season opener home football game is being brought to you by bsn sports and nike the official apparel and uniform provider for yellow jacket athletics university hospitals the medical provider for bw athletics and its student athletes and dan andrews and olympic forest products a global recycling company today's game is also being brought to you by the oswald company risk and insurance leaders since 1893 Chuck Rattuno and OE Connection LLC, your global automotive technology provider. Medical Mutual of Ohio, the official healthcare provider of Baldwin Wallace University. Barron's Bus Lines, the official charter bus company of Yellow Jacket Athletics. Mike's Bar and Grill in downtown Berea, the home of the Monday Night Athletics Roadshow. And Antonio's Pizzeria of Middleburg Heights, the official pizza sponsor of Yellow Jacket Athletics. You are enjoying today's Yellow Jacket season opening football game on BWYellowJackets.com and OAC. TV. Barf Singh on to kick it off. He's teed it up at the 35 yard line. Stokes and Love back to return for the Yellow Jackets. Barf Singh's kick is a good one. It'll be taken by Stokes at the 7. Stokes past the 15 to the 20, out to the 30. Good head of steam. Gives the Yellow Jackets first and 10 out past the 30. Call it the 32 yard line. And now good field position. Uh, for the Jackets with no penalties, nothing on this kick return. So we'll see if they can take advantage, and they need to with only 7.16 left. You know, not a whole lot of time. You need two scores, and more importantly than that, you need a stop on defense. Four receivers in the formation, one back in the backfield. Three to the right, one to the left. Marisak looking right the whole way. Throws it down the field. It's almost caught by Elijah Arnett. Just too tall. He was wide open. And Marisak just left it a little too tall for the wide receiver who goes 6'1", 210. Yeah, and they've had trouble on that far side, especially that far quarter um, of just kind of losing the guy that's um, supposed to be out there. And I think that's something that they'll come back to attacking, but uh, you really would have liked to have that throw. Second and 10 from their own 32-yard line. The Yellow Jackets looking to cut into a 13-point deficit. Marisek with a five-receiver look. Looks to his left. Looking for Stokes down the field. It's batted up. Stokes oh! makes the one-handed catch inside Mount St. Joseph territory. A flag flew before the catch and a flag flew after the catch as well. Early indications both went against Mount St. Joseph. We will see. Yeah, I can't see them calling this one back, but that's the second time we've seen Stokes go up there and make an incredible catch. This one with one hand as he's falling away and hitting the ground. He survives the ground and holds onto the ball. Beautiful catch, exactly what the offense needed there. Um, and I think they'll, they're will they going to have to look to continue to test those deep um, deep waters for the, the secondary uh, because that's what they've gotten the most out of uh, their plays today. 
Yeah, absolutely. They've tested this Mount St. Joseph defense, and the Yellow Jacket receivers have made a lot of plays against this secondary. Yellow Jackets get 15 extra yards on that one-handed beautiful catch by Darius Stokes because of the late hit. And they get now first and 10 at the Mount St. Joseph 25. And this is an opportunity you have to cash in if you're the Yellow Jackets. Arnett out wide right. Love flanking his left side and LaMeo in a slot on the right. Conwell in the slot on the left with Stokes out wide left. Five wide receiver look for Marisek. Marisek takes the snap, looking left. Now over the middle, throws it down the field for Arnett. And it's broken up in the end zone. Andrew Pierce from his cornerback stop breaks it up. It'll be second and 10 for the Yellow Jackets. Like we said, testing that deep far side, trying to go to his receiver there, Lameo, who's made some incredible plays in this game as well. I'm just not able to haul it in, but you have to figure they're going back to that at some point. Love will check out. Victor Ford Jr. will check in. Three receiver look to the right, Stokes one on one on the left, and uh, Victor Ford Jr. in as the lone back in the backfield. Victor Ford Jr. takes the handoff across the 25 to the 20, down to the 15, that's first down yardage for the Yellow Jackets. Victor Ford Jr. hasn't gotten a ton of work today, but he has given the Yellow Jackets a spark in this second half with some power running. And he'll get another carry. Down to the 15, inside the 10. Skips over to the 6. And that's a gain of 8. They'll bring up second and short for the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, and like you said, I've been surprised we haven't seen as much of Victor Ford. Um, all indications seem to point to the fact that he would carry the load. But it's been more Lindberger in the second half that we've seen back there. But uh, Ford very explosive, and he's ran hard all day. Um, so it's good to see him back there making the defense pay. Marisek takes the snap, hands off to Victor Ford Jr. Inside the five, plows his way into the end zone for a yellow jacket touchdown. BW makes it a one score game once again as they now trail 39-32 with the extra point pending. And beautiful block scheme there by the line, getting to the second level on that zone run. We saw how big that hole was from here just untouched into the end zone and then using his acrobatic skills to just land softly and uh, get the ball over the plane. Evans' extra point attempt is on the way and it's good. He had a couple of his previous kicks go awry, but that one splits the uprights and makes it a six point game. The Lions lead the Yellow Jackets 39-33, 5.53 to go in the fourth quarter. And I think the best sign for the Yellow Jackets is that they were able to consistently get five, six, seven yards running the ball towards the end of that series, which is something they haven't had. A flag was thrown with both teams in a huddle. I don't know that I've seen that before. It's kind of hard to penalize someone when there's no one on the field. It, there was some pointing toward Mount St. Joseph's sideline. I'm not sure what the deal is here. We will see. They do have one sideline warning already today, but yeah, I wonder what just happened. The re umpire just came to get the referee to explain to him. The field judge is now explaining to the Mount St. Joseph coach what's going on. And we'll line it up to kick it off sometime soon. <laughs> Quite a bit of yellow on the field here today as it's, we open the season. It's been a season opener for both teams. We'll just put it that <laughs> way. It's been tough. And you know, that's that's kind of how week one goes. You know, there's missed assignments. Deshaun Starks called for unsportsmanlike conduct after the play. 
and the Yellow Jackets will kick off from midfield. So you figure Mount St. Joseph more than likely going to end up with the ball at the 25. Although this would be a heck of a time to try to try something if you're the Yellow Jackets. Evans on to kick it away. And he puts it into the student section. <laughs> so that'll be first and 10 Lions from their own 25 yard line after the touchback. One of the first times we've seen uh, the Lions have to go relatively full field for this. This is this, this is new territory. The for worst them. <laughs> starting field position I can remember them having. Um, yeah, they they haven't had a whole lot to complain about in the field position department. They've been set up on a lot of short fields by Yellow Jacket miscues. And this one they're gonna have to go a little bit longer. Three receiver set, two to the right, one to the left, two backs in the backfield. Taylor in a pistol formation, takes the snap, fakes the handoff, looking left. It's complete to Porter Jr. First down yardage out to the 40, and he'll probably get to the 44-yard line. Nope, they're going to say he stepped out at the 42. Either way, first down for the Lions. Yeah, good ball fake there by Taylor. Kind of sucked in the inside linebackers. Didn't end up mattering as he threw it outside uh, to Porter, who's had a big day out there. Um, and now uh, the defense will have to tighten up. Taylor fakes the handoff. It's batted up in the air and knocked back about 15 yards incomplete. Bring up second and long for Mount St. Joseph. And to your point, Omar Porter Jr., how about this for a day? Six receptions, 107 yards, 17.8 yards per reception, long play of 39 and one of five touchdowns receiving for this Lions Ooh. team today. Yeah, that aerial attack has been lethal, and, and and yet only down by six are the Jackets. Taylor hands off to Beecham Jr. He's bottled up at the line of scrimmage and driven into the sideline. A flag comes in late, and this is probably not good for the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, Dixon acting as a wall there. As soon as um, running back hit him, just instantly stopped going forward at all. Beautiful tackle uh, combined with the D-line there. Um, but we'll see what this, this flag holds, and hopefully for the Jackets. Hopefully it's a hold on Mont yeah. St. Joseph, but we shall see. All right. The way this game's third gone so far, I think uh, that's a pretty good outcome. <laughs> third and nine from the 43, and I would concur <laughs> with Mr. Logan Rogers' opinion on that one. <laughs> that's about the best-case scenario that you could hope for. Third and long. 5-19 to go here in the fourth quarter. Jackets looking to get off the field. And you wonder if they'll send pressure or be content to sit back. They're showing three at the line. Two receiver look for the Lions. Taylor flushed out of the pocket, looking to his right, throws it down the field and throws it into the Yellow Jacket sideline. Incomplete. And cr credit those inside, two inside zone players. As soon as they see Taylor stepping up, they instantly make a beeline for him, not allowing him to get outside the pocket, which they've done a great job of all day. And then they force him off platform once again to throw it high. And that is a textbook stop and a very well needed stop for the BW defense. And they're going to get the ball back here with 5-12 left and real chance to do something. I'm going to give Taylor credit on that because he escaped a lot of pressure. And I'm also going to give his teammates credit for not committing a holding penalty in, the, in, in trying to block and give him extra time. But, man, fortunately for the Yellow Jackets, they get a stop on third down 
Fourth and nine from the 43-yard line. The Lions will punt it away. Claire gets the snap, puts the right foot into it. His worst punt of the day, but it was going to take a 20-yard roll end over end. It's fielded at the 22. Alden Steele on the return, spins at the 25, cuts back to the 20, and he's going to lose those five yards that he tried to gain or that he did gain initially, and he'll get stopped right at the 20-yard line. First and 10 Yellow Jackets at the 21 yard line. So I guess some forward progress was awarded to the return man. 4.58 to go, BW trails Mount St. Joseph, 39-33. Three timeouts for the Yellow Jackets, two for the Lions. Marisek breaks the huddle with four receivers in the formation. Conwell goes left to right. Hand off to Victor Ford Jr. He's across the 25 and down to the 26. Call it a gain of five. That brings up second and five. Great thing about the defense getting the stop when it did is that you still have four minutes, so you don't necessarily have to take the running game out of it. And now you can do a lot more with your offense, especially since you were able to really get it going towards the end of last drive. Yeah, especially with Victor Ford on the field. I mean, he has been a spark plug over these last two possessions, looking to do more of it. Marisek takes the snap on second and five, steps up in the pocket, and he's going to get out of one sack, but he's not going to get out of the second one. And bringing him down, that's Declan Brophy. Loss of four on the play. It'll bring up third and nine. Yeah, Brophy's been a pass rush force all day long. Um, like we said, seven and a half uh, sacks last year, um, and he's coming on strong here in this first game. Um, but good decision by Morosic to just tuck it as soon as he felt any type of pressure on him, um, not to avoid, just to avoid the big mistake. And now we'll see what they can do on third and nine. Four receiver look, Conwell and Arnett out wide left, Stokes and Lameo out wide right. Marisek steps up in the pocket. Rolls out to his right, throws it to LaMeo, and LaMeo dropped a first down reception at the 42-yard line. He was open, and it hit him in the hands, and he couldn't hang on. Yeah, another great job of getting out of the pressure, getting out of the pocket from Morosic, as we've seen all day. And then unfortunately, LaMeo, who's made some great plays in this game, just not able to hang on to that one. Um, so now it's up to the defense again to make yet another stop. And uh, we'll see what they've got for us. 3.35 to go. The Yellow Jacket's going to punt it away. Dylan Coyman on to do the honors. He takes a snap, puts the right foot into it. It's a nice wobbling punt that bounces at the 37 and will be downed at the 38. Call it the 37-yard line. Mount St. Joseph will have first and 10. Mount St. Joseph has had a world of success passing the ball right now but the run game might be their friend. The one exception being that they are very good at throwing screen passes and taking them up the field. Yeah, they, they have like the quick game passes today, and I, I, I haven't seen, we haven't seen as much um, read option as I thought we would as well. Um, so I wonder if they'll go back to that a little bit here, needing to run some clock out, but the defensive line for BW has been pretty stout all day. Beecham sent in motion, handoff goes to Gifford. He ducks the shoulder, gets a gain of one, maybe two, out to the 39. No, call it the 38, gain of one. Great Worthy. tackle by Worthy. Yeah, Worthy lost his helmet. He has to leave for one play. Second and nine from the 38. When we get back underway, stoppage in play. clock adjustment issue 17 seconds put back on the game clock and the play clock was reset to 40 and 
both are running. Taylor and the Lions, as expected, in no hurry to use or to snap the ball. They are working that play clock down, probably under 10 before they'll even get over the ball. Right at 10. They burnt off 30 seconds there. Taylor takes a snap, handoff inside, and it's a gain of one and a half by Beecham, and the Yellow Jackets will burn their first of three timeouts. Third down for the Lions from just outside of the 40 yard line, their own 40. They need to get to the 47. So we'll call it third and six and a half to seven. 2.46 to go. The Yellow Jackets definitely needing a stop here to try and give the offense one last hope of getting the game tying and hopefully game winning points. Taylor with four receivers in the formation, two to the left, two to the right, one back in the backfield. Taylor takes a snap, looks to his left over the middle. It's complete to Newton. First down yardage and more. 30, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Mount St. Joseph. And that's a backbreaker for the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, that's, that's going to make it pretty tough on the Jackets to come back now. But 60-yard uh, touchdown. Oh, by the way, the young man also had a 58-yard score. So in two touchdown receptions, he has 118 yards re receiving. Yeah, I mean, Newton, Newton's been his guy on, on third down in situations where he's got to have it. That's been the guy um, Taylor's gone to today. Um, just a simple simple up the seam route, uh, just gets rid of it quickly, and uh, then Newton's able to do the rest after the play. Barfsing on the attempt the extra point. It's up, and it's good. That makes it 46-33. to 33. Lions lead the Yellow Jackets with 2.33 to play in the fourth quarter. And risky, risky call on a third down there by the Lions. Uh, opting to pass, could have gone poorly. So get, give them a little bit of credit for for uh, finding the right guy. Uh, Taylor's been good all day. Is that uh, six? I six mean, 27 of 51 for 428 yards and six touchdowns with no interceptions. He's also run for seven yards on five attempts. I mean, six touchdowns, you're talking this young man is probably going to be up for, if not on D3Football.com Team of the Week and he'll have earned it because he's played very, very well. Oh, I mean, at, uh, on this, at this point, he's on pace for 60 passing touchdowns alone this year. Yeah, so, and that's uh, just regular season, by the way. I yeah. mean, and the Heartland Athletic, uh, Collegiate Athletic Conference, I mean, it's a, it's a league that Mount St. Joseph has an opportunity to really do some damage in this year. Stokes and Love back to return for the Yellow Jackets. Farf sing on to kick it away for the Lions.
charges the ball, puts a right foot into it. Stokes will take it at the six. Run to the middle of the field. Get it along the hash mark out to the 30, and he'll get no more than that. So the Yellow Jackets needing two scores with only 2.27 to go. They need a quick score. They need to Hello? recover an onside kick and then another score. Yeah, they'll be going fast now. Yeah. <laughs> Victor Ford Jr. is going to be either in decoy mode or in uh, – or in pass receiving mode. I don't think they can afford to give him the ball too much. LeMayo and Arnett go out wide right. Conwell in the slot on the left with Darius Stokes out wide left. Stokes is a big play waiting to happen. And Marisek has been known to go to him in these situations. Now Marisek tucking it, throwing it into the sideline, and then gets buried into the turf. After releasing the ball, Jack Tucker applying the heat for the Lions. Yep, I mean, good decision there. Nothing you like downfield. Just throw it away, live to Fight play another, another play. Yeah. Yep. Agreed. That's the way to do it. Conwell goes out wide right this time with Arnett. LeMayo in the slot. Darius Stokes one-on-one -on, -one on the left with a little help from the safety. Marisek looks left, now looks middle, letting the play trying to let the play develop, and he throws it into the bench. Incomplete, brings up third and 10 for the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, I mean, the Lions just gonna be in really soft coverage now, content to let anything underneath develop. Is that a waste time? Um, so Morosik's gotta pick his spot to, uh, to kind of drop one in here, uh, but he has to be careful as well. Um, Wondering if they'll test that far side. Again, we've seen them have some communication breakdowns and uh, lose some receivers as far as eyes go over there. So we'll see how they develop this play. Five look, wide receiver look. Marisek off the, or over the middle of the field to Conwell. It's complete to the 37-yard line. That brings up a fourth and three for the Yellow Jackets. Five receiver look again. Marisek takes the snap. Looking to his left. He'll run it. He's across the 40. Slides at the 43-yard line. It's a first down for the Yellow Jackets. They have to hurry. They're staying with the five wide look. Two left, three right. Marisek in the shotgun. Takes the snap. Looking across the middle. The Lions content to let that happen. And Marisek's pass sails over Love's head and is intercepted by Brady Pierce, the nickelback. Coming up with the third interception of the day. That is five turnovers for the Yellow Jackets. That is a hard way to play and expect to come out with a win. I mean, that, that, that's what they always say. What's the number one thing with a stat you can look at and um, det really determines who wins and loses is the turnover battle. And um, as we mentioned, Taylor with no interceptions today. Um, I don't believe they've had a fumble either, so. Um, um, much cleaner game from the Lions than the Jackets today, and that's really what's cost uh, the Jackets an opportunity at this game. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, you think back to the first half and the turnovers, the fumbles, put Mount St. Joseph on short fields. They come back, they score quickly on two drives, and that spells the end of it. Mount St. Joseph burns a timeout with 1.36 to go and a 13-point lead, 46-33. to and one final time while we have this break in the action, I want to remind you that today's Yellow Jacket football game is being brought to you by BSN Sports and Nike, the official apparel and uniform provider for Yellow Jacket Athletics, University Hospitals, the medical provider for BW Athletics and its student athletes, and Dan Andrews and Olympic Forest Products, a global recycling company. Today's game is also being brought to you by the Oswald Company Risk and Insurance Leaders since 1893. Chuck Rattuno and OE Connection LLC, your global automotive technology provider. Medical Mutual of Ohio, the official health care provider of Baldwin Wallace University. Barron's Bus Lines, the official charter bus company of Yellow Jacket Athletics. Mike's Bar and Grill in downtown Berea, the home of the Monday Night Athletics Roadshow. And Antonio's Pizzeria of Middleburg Heights, the official pizza sponsor of Yellow Jacket Athletics. You are listening to today's game on BWYellowJackets.com and OAC TV. Taylor with the handoff and goes to Devin Holt and the clock keeps running 
as Holt pushes the ball out to the 37 yard line. So gain of two on the play. Second and eight for the Lions. And Coach Hilbert elects to use his second timeout with 109 to go. And he's having a chat with the officials, or the head referee, I should say, before he huddles up the defense. It was a quick message before he broke the huddle and sent the team back onto the field. receivers in the formation he'll hand off once again that goes to Holt and he pushes the ball out to the 47 yard line Hilbert will use his third and final timeout 103 to go in this game third and three from the 42 Mount St. Joseph needs to get past the 45 to put a bow on this season opener against the Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets. Taylor takes the snap, hands off to Holt once again, and a flag is thrown. He should have first down yardage, but it looks like it's going to be in the area of a hold on Mount St. Joseph. receiver from the 43 it'll be marched off to the 33 so they'll bring up third and long for the Lions takes a snap, hands off to Holt again. He's over the 35, over the 40, up near the 45. They're going to mark him down at the 44. I'll bring up fourth and one for the Lions. It looks like Mount St. Joseph will have to run one more play. Hey. Like there's a one second differential between the game clock and the play clock. You assume they'll just snap it back to Taylor and let him just kind of walk around for a second and then go down? Yeah. Yep, there you go. Takes a snap, takes a knee then rolls around on the ground and raises his hands in celebration after leading the Mount St. Joseph Lions to a 46-33 win over the Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets. Taking a look at the final numbers here.
Taylor finished the game 27 of 51 for 428 yards, six touchdowns and no turnovers. Jackson Gifford led the way with 48 yards on nine carries for the Lions. And receiving, they had two, two young men go over the 100-yard mark. Joey Newton had 147 yards and two touchdowns on six receptions. Omar Porter Jr. had 107 yards and one score on six receptions. Caden Pollard found the end zone two times on just three receptions. And Austin Brock also found the end zone for the Lions. Leading the way for the Yellow Jackets, Joey Marisak was 24 of 41 for 330 yards, two touchdowns, but had three interceptions. Victor Ford Jr. led the way rushing the football, 78 yards and one touchdown on 17 carries. Joey Marisak had 37 yards and two touchdowns on 13 carries. Connor Awad had, or led the way, I should say, receiving the ball with 153 yards on five catches. Darius Stokes had 48 yards on seven catches. Elijah Arnett, 48 yards and one touchdown on two receptions. And then Jonah Schrock had the two-yard reception for the Yellow Jackets as well. Once again, your final score from uh, Trestle Field at the George Finney Stadium, the uh, College of Mount St. Joseph Lions 47, or 46, the Baldwin Wallace University Yellow Jackets 33, for Logan Rogers and everybody here at the Baldwin Wallace or University, I'm Matt Florchancic saying thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week when the Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets return right here to uh, Trestle Field at the George Finney Stadium when they open Ohio Athletic Conference play against the Wilmington Quakers in the Hall of Fame game here at BW. Thanks for listening, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday.